lead attorney. Can you guys hear me? Can I hear me? All right. Lead attorney here. I hope you guys are doing well. All right, we are back. Let's take a look. Let us do a little screen share and uh, see where we're at with this courtroom. Oh, struggle streaming already. All right. Bam. Bam. All right. So they are still uh, out to watch. <laughs> Y'all are killing. <laughs> Y'all are on as that lead taking care of that smooth cat. Listen, we are back, guys. We are back. Shout out to Felicity. That lead had to fly to Virginia real quick. <laughs> had to holler at Camille. Had to holler at Camille. Uh, shout out to Bezanur. My, my man said, yes, TLA is retired. Right? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not in these streets anymore. I'm not in these in these trenches. I did it for 20 years, guys. 20 goddamn years. So I am here with y'all now, man, and I'm loving it. I'm absolutely loving it. Everybody can hit the like button for me like that. That'd be real, uh, that'd be real nice. We're just waiting for them to come back in. Said TLA said a smooth cat. Yeah, so what do y'all do? Oh, oh, here we go, here we go. We ain't even, we don't have uh, even a minute to chat. We are getting right back into it. Let's see here. So they are at the judge's bench. Oh my God. Look at this. The trolls are in here. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Man. Y'all are so hardcore. Y'all, I mean, if you know, you know. I love you guys so much. The trolls are with it, boy. Shout out to the trolls. <laughs> how do y'all, how do y'all do these things? Y'all, y'all are killer. Y'all are absolute killer. Uh, oh, we got said TLA eating a sandwich somewhere. Okay, Miss Spices. Man, how TLA always late? That's what these judges used to ask. They'd be like, uh, TLA, how are you late all the damn time? I was like, Judge, you know I'm on my way. <laughs> Just call somebody else, case I'm on the way, Judge. I need to stop to get my Starbucks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get Starbucks to put up with your bullshit, Judge. Give me a second. Said, I, though TLA is retired, yeah, I'm out the game, guys. I'm out the game, but um, I'm in it with y'all, and we are taking a look at this. And this is so awesome. This is such a good uh, a good experience for us. Shout out to Link said, lead in the bathroom, eating that varsity. Woo! <laughs> you will go to the bathroom after the varsity. That varsity is for real. We got JB in the house says, we are back, man. Y'all are killing it. It was quick. <laughs> That's what she said. It's like, uh, we barely had time to eat, Judge. Like, give us an hour and a half or something, All right? So what do y'all think? Um, I think Camille's doing it. I think Camille, she's doing it for me. I'll be honest with you. I've seen a lot of attorneys, uh, they ain't really hitting the spot, if I can be honest. Uh, but Camille's doing it for me. I hit it for Camille one time. Have Camille I'm send her her ticket. Have her come down to Atlanta Hartsville Jackson Airport, the busiest airport in the world. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I'm picking Camille up by baggage claim six. <laughs> we don't do it, man. Shout out to Condemn You. Got Condemn You in the house, man. Uh, I got Gail in the house. Shout out to Gail. Shout out to From Within said everything about joining LawTube. They are on fire. That's how. That's where I got this idea. I was over on Rakita. I don't know if you saw me. I was on Rakita. There were 17,000 people in the chat. It was me and like eight other attorneys. And then that was my first time on there. And then I went up there again. And then I went up there again. In fact, uh, they just released a video of all of, of so many attorneys reacting to Amber starting the cross and they put me in it. Like I'm in it now. So shout, shout out to from within, man. If y'all know, Rikita put me onto that damn, uh, 
what's that dude's name? Like Johnny, uh, it's not Johnny. What's the dude's name? Uh, I want to say Johnny Black, but what's the dude's name? <laughs> he put me onto that shit. I went down a rabbit hole. Uh, but yeah, I just, in fact, um, I just shared that picture. Uh, sorry, that video where it was me. It was Rakita. It was Legal Bites. It was Emily Baker. We were all reacting to uh, uh, Grandma sitting down and, the, and Camille standing up. We were all freaking out there. Yeah, y'all were here to, to, to witness the freak out when the uh, cross-examination started. So, yeah, we are on it. Shout out to From Within again. It says, Emily D. Baker regularly has 100 in her stream. Yeah, she's killing it. Everybody's killing it. Legal Bites, uh, um, Rakita. Dude, uh, Law and Crimes, they had 300,000. <laughs> Law and Crimes had 300,000 people in a damn chat. Like how, I mean, electronically, how does it fit? Where does it top off? 300,000 people in one chat. That's way bigger than a concert. It's bigger than the damn Super Bowl. Like, you know, I mean, how, 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 how many people does the stadium hold? So yeah, everybody's interested. Shout out to Gasson's world. Say, got to put Camila in Delta one class lead. Oh yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm having a, a, a Camille set up there in the sky lounge, right? <laughs> Waiting on me to come pick up. Baby, I'm stuck on 7585. I'll be there. I'll be there. You just wait for me in the Sky Lounge. <laughs> Was it worth it, Amber? Yes. She got over, man. She got the damn $7 million. And it is absolutely crazy. Jack Murphy. Thank you so, so much, Kevin. Uh, Jack Murphy. Do y'all know? I told some of y'all about Jack Murphy, man. That shit was crazy. Absolutely crazy. Says uh Camille's questioning seems open-ended. Um, no, it's not open-ended. In fact, she's doing a really good job at not asking open-ended questions, but she, she's she's letting her off the hook by not getting a yes or no. So that's 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 exactly right. Says now, like in cringe, like in cringe has really 771,000 guys. Damn, huh? That's a good idea, sorry. Shout out to Shantae. Shantae Summer says, leads yours is way entertaining. Thank you so much, Shantae. I appreciate that. All right, so we are back in it. Raquel says, uh, yeah, she says, let's go Camille Gonzalez. Oh, shit. <laughs> Why you gotta put Gonzalez in it? Is her last name Gonzalez? What's her last name? I thought it was something else. Mr. Mustache. Shout out to Mr. Mustache for becoming a member. This man sponsored the stream, the entire stream yesterday. Thank you so much, Mr. Mustache. Mustache supporting your boy, man. Thank you. Thank you. You can be you're right. Y'all racist as hell Talk about Gonzalez. Y'all just throwing anything. Hernandez. It's Camille Hernandez. What do you name it? What's name it? Hernandez? It's about to be Camille Campbell. What? Hold up now. <laughs> Hold up, Lee. <laughs> uh, Tom, may I please have you put up uh, Plaintiff's Exhibit 881A? Right. We are back. Ms. Heard, I'm going to ask you to take a look at Plaintiff's Exhibit 881A. Um, this is one of the articles containing the counterclaim statements by Adam Waldman. Is that correct? I haven't seen the article yet. Okay. Why don't we go to page eight of this article? What the hell is that? Adam Waldman, Depp's lawyer, said afterwards, quote, Amber Heard and her friends in the media use fake sexual violence allegations as both a sword and shield, depending on their needs. They have selected some of her sexual violence hoax facts as a sword, inflicting them on the public and Mr. Depp. Do you see that? Yes, I do. Is that one of the statements that you allege are defamatory? It's defamatory? That's, that's correct. Um, can we please go to Plaintiff's Exhibit 881B? Uh, 
And if we could go to page 10 and 11. In exhibit, plaintiff's exhibit 881B, Dobbs lawyer Adam Walden said the various discrepancies prove that nothing heard in her friends said about the events of May 21, 2016 could be considered credible. Quite simply, this was an ambush, a hoax. They set Mr. Depp up by calling the cops. The, the first attempt didn't do the trick, he told the dailymail.com. The officers came to the penthouses, thoroughly searched and interviewed and left after seeing no damage to face or property. So Amber, her friends spilled a little wine and roughed the place up, got their story straight under the direction of a lawyer and publicist, and then placed a second call to 911. But even this didn't have, oh, apologize. You're fine. Okay. All right, shout out to, shout out to Amika. The beautiful Mika Harris. What is Harrison? What is Mika? Mika Harrison say she has become a new YouTube member. Thank you so, so much, Mika. Thank you so much. What do y'all think about my girl, Camille, in the cream suit? You know she picked that shit out last night. Like, ooh, I'm going to kill him. I'm going to kill him in this cream suit. Watch with the shoes that I match with it. Oh, my God. You know she had, the, you know she had this day circled on her calendar. This was her day. This is her day. Damn, y'all claiming? Some first somebody said I could have Camille, then somebody else was like, "No, Camille, mine." So who am I supposed to have? We talked about this on my Instagram. Okay, guys, who do y'all think would be a good match for me? Y'all know I'm single. Who do you think would be a good match for me in terms of YouTubers? I think we talked about the the prettiest uh, YouTubers. Who who would y'all like to see me with? I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn this bitch into a matchmaker. <laughs> Get the lead attorney some ass.com. <laughs> like let's listen, listen, like who do y'all think I should be? Oh, I knew it. This is what this is what we talked about. Goddamn Melanie King. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Melanie King got the whole internet on lock. What goddamn. Melody King, shout out to Melody King, man. Damn. Mr. Mustache says, y'all, Tasha, can you already know? Oh, I would hit Tasha. I mean, I would have to for the culture. I would have to. I would blow Tasha case back out. Like, you, remember what you, you remember what you said? You remember that bullshit? <laughs> Had everybody thinking I was in a goddamn wheelchair. I would wear her ass out. I would have to take her to goddamn Northside Hospital after that. She, she'd have a leg over here, a leg back there over there. I, boy, I, would, I would have to do it for the culture, right? And I would release the tape. <laughs> I would have to. At this point, like all is fair in love and war. Oh, and it would be some warfare in that damn bedroom. It would be some war She'd be like, Lee, can we go to Fogo first? Hell no, get in this. You took Camille to Fogo first. You ain't Camille, goddammit. <laughs> you are not Camille. <laughs> I'd be like, Alexa, put on juvenile. Oh. <laughs> put on juvenile, Alexa. <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> Ooh, I mean, it would be for my pride at that point. At, at that point, it would it would be me and Tasha K with my pride in the balance. I would, oh, I would have to go hard. I would have to go hard, boy. Because if I did it, you know she would make a damn live stream about it. She would get up in front of her million subscribers and start talking shit. Oh, my God. I would have to put a sweatband on. <laughs> All right, we are back, guys. We are back. Y'all calling dibs on And yeah. if we can please uh, pull up Plaintiff's Exhibit 881C. Somebody said Olga. I would murder Grandma. I would catch a case behind Grandma. Page 11. Shout out to... Fair and says, do it for the culture. This is another yeah. article, Ms. Heard, where you of course, argue that uh, Mr. Waldman's statements are defamatory, correct? 
I don't know if this is taken from that article because I can't see the article in full. Jesus Christ. It's page 11 of the article. Shante sent me. Shout out to Shante. And the statement reads, Shout out to Sadia. Kita G is exactly right. Boy, y'all want to see the sex tape. Y'all want to see it. Everybody like Tasha K. And you know I'm about to suck on her titties. Just because she said I wouldn't. Just because she said I wouldn't. And those look like some damn double C's or something. Isn't that a size double C? We have reached the beginning of the end of Ms. Hurd's abuse house against Mr. Depp. Is that correct? Is that one of the defam what you claim is one of the defamatory statements sent by Mr. Waldman? I believe so. Okay. Thank you. Y'all want it for the culture. Everybody's like Tasha K. Ms. Hurd, you're not aware of any career opportunities that you lost as a result of Mr. Waldman's statements, are you? Okay, Angela. Now we're talking, well, it's Angela. Kind of hard to point to the jobs you're not offered, right. to the gigs you don't get. You were not replaced in Aquaman 2, were you? They released me from my contract and I fought to stay in it and they kept me in it. I just don't know how much I'm in, actually, of the final cut. And you testified yesterday that L'Oreal actually extended your contract in April of 2020. Is that correct? In part, they extended and it and held me. And you testified yesterday that L'Oreal extended your contract again in November of 2021, correct? Not exactly. They extended it because it couldn't use me or any of the materials uh, for me. And that extension was for 20 months, right? That's correct. <laughs> Ms. Hurd, you testified yesterday how Mr. Waldman's statements, quote, torture you every day. Do you recall that testimony? I do. Oh, hell no. And then, um, and that you look at them every day. I look at the um, online attacks, the media, you can't avoid it, to be honest, that those statements are often attached to. I don't look at his statements every day. Y'all got me fucked up. You testified that you just want to move on with your life, right? I do very much want to move on with my life. But you've gone out of your way to engage with Mr. Waldman on social media, haven't you? Uh, I have made a comment, I believe, once. I did not, I would not characterize that as engaging with him. Let's please pull up Plaintiff's Exhibit 1266. Can y'all hit the like button for me, please? Please. We almost got 3,000 people in here. Your microphone. I'm sorry. I don't have this yet, so I'm asking for it to right be there. given to okay. me before. It's a photograph. I think it's just a. Tyler to Tasha K. This is your tweet, right, Ms. Hurd? Tasha K. That is correct. I'm Tasha going to K. move to admit and publish this tweet. Objection. Relevance. Objection. I'm sorry. Is your, what's the Relevant? objection? I'm sorry. Relevance. All right. I'll overrule the objection. 881C in evidence. Okay. La loca. La toxica. Can you please have it published to the jury? Yes. Shout out to Natasha. Natasha, a real one. <laughs> I'm sorry, 1266. I apologize. I would have to Thank bang you. out Neek, too, for that bullshit trying to steal my course. This is from March 26, 2021, right? That's what it looks like, yes. And this is after he made the statement you claim, the statements you claim are defamatory, right, Ms. Heard? 21, yes. Ms. Heard, you tweeted at Adam Waldman, quote, yes, Mr. Waldman, I may be wearing makeup on this occasion, but on every occasion you will still be short. Did I read that right? Yes. Jesus. Calling men short? Thank you. With your crazy heard, ass? Since your relationship with Mr. Depp ended, you have completed your level three sommelier training, haven't you? I haven't completed it yet. You're I just on stopped. level two? No, I'm on level three. You also have had a baby, right? I have. And you enjoy being a mother? More than anything. You still love to cook? I do. And you love to hike? I've taken a break on hiking for a minute. You have friends, right? I do have friends. And you spend time with those friends? Occasionally, when I can. And you exercise regularly? Every day. You just filmed a movie in March of 2022, isn't that right? Yes, the one I just shot in Guatemala that I spoke of earlier. And you have, um, you had a major role in a major film that's scheduled to be released soon, is that correct? 
Aquaman 2? As I said, I don't know if I will even be in the final cut or how much I will be. It was difficult to stay in the movie. You struck Mr. Depp multiple times during your relationship, didn't you, Ms. Heard? There were many times I had to use my body to defend myself, and that included oh swinging wherever I could. If it meant I could get away, absolutely. If it meant a, a difference between a sore face and a broken nose, you bet I would. She's Does your testimony down. under oath that you never struck Mr. Depp as the initial aggressor? Well, I, he was holding me against the wall by my neck. You know, I might be the first person to have been the, the, the first one to slap which happened in Australia, you know, and he was choking me, but I wouldn't say I was the initial aggressor in that situation. You got physical with Mr. Depp often during your relationship, didn't you? I had to defend myself as best I could. Um, didn't seem to make much of a difference. You just couldn't control yourself, could you, Ms. Heard? I tried to defend myself when I could, um, but it was after years of not defending myself. Can we please pull up Plaintiff's Exhibit 356? And Your Honor, portions of the exhibit were entered into evidence yesterday, but we moved to admit the entire recording. Right, and I can confirm that there's no other voices besides Ms. Hurd's and Mr. Depp's. And I intend to play um, from 129.27 to 130.07. So Guys, 356A in evidence, is any objection to the, the entire 356 coming into evidence? Oh, if you may, if I may. Okay. Hold on just for sure. a moment, Your Honor, I have to check on something. Amber, Amber Heard is not going down without a fight. Amber is not letting Camille pin her down. She's fighting every step of the way. Camille is like, have you ever been the aggressor? And Amber's like, well, you know, he when he would have me up against the wall choking me, I might have slapped him. <laughs> like, she's not. And we'll double check our notes on that because there was one that had something in that that we couldn't go, and I just can't right. find my notes on that. Oh, right we'll now. just call it 356B for now. That's fine. Thank you, Your Honor. Could you just give me the... the Amber's again? fighting, yes, guys. Yes, of course. 12927 to 13007. All right. And I'm told that we already have a B, so you have to do 356C. Okay. Shout okay. out to Mr. Thank Moustache. You, Thank you so much. Said Tasha. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mr. Moustache, Mr. Moustache is exactly right. I'd have to do it for the culture. I can't. I can't promise you that I'll be perfect. I can't promise you I won't get physical. God, I fucking sometimes get so mad. I lose it. I can fucking promise you I'm going to do everything to change. I promise you. I'm not going to throw around divorce. I will not say divorce unless I leave you. Unless it's it. And then I hope you leave me. I'm not going to. And me too. I will leave you. It's fair. I can't do it. You know, and I think honestly, if we hold each other accountable to that, it's fair. Ms. Heard, that's you and Mr. Depp on that recording, correct? That's correct. And you told Mr. Depp, quote, I can't promise you that I won't get physical, end quote. Correct? That, that's correct. He was accusing me of instigating something in the situation I explained yesterday. And you also told Mr. Depp that sometimes you get so mad you lose it, correct? That's correct. I also explained the context of that fight yesterday. Isn't that exactly what you told Ben King on your way back from Australia? That you get so mad you lose it? Absolutely not. I know that that's what Ben King testified to, but I never had that conversation with Ben King. If we could please In play. Meantime, I'm sorry. Um, I checked and I have no objection to the entirety of 356 right. coming so in. So 356 in its entirety will be in evidence. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. If we could please play from what's now been admitted, Plaintiff's Exhibit 356 in its entirety from 705 to 743. Thank you, Helen. I'm not going to be in a physical fucking altercation don't. with you. Then don't. You fucking hit me last night. You fucking... What about all the other times you spoke? Hey, come on, you cannot act like that. It's about that. It's well, not... we're on a plane. I can't spoil. No, and you hit back. So don't act like you don't fucking participate. I pushed you. I'm not going to get into the details of that fight. You and I both know that you split when there is no physical violence involved. And that you do it at me, like at the very beginning of fights these days. And if you split and you go into a different room and you don't actually leave that house, it does nothing but perpetuate the fight. And you don't actually do it respectfully. You don't. Camille, okay. nail her on this. Go word Sir, is by that word. you, Mr. Depp, on this recording? Yes, it is. 
Can we please uh, pull up Plaintiff's Exhibit 343? <sighs> Camille. That one's been admitted already into evidence. Let's talk. You played the damn video recording. And Let's just talk for the record, about it. Um, we're playing from 24601 to 24720. I don't like those guys. I said to Travis, I said, Good. no, I said to you, hey, Can't tell Travis what just happened. You oh, you told me to do it. You yeah. told me to. You said, go do that. I said, no, t tell him what just happened. And I lied. And that you punched me in the You're fucking right. thing. And you, you figured it all out. And you said, no, fuck that. No, I didn't. What the fuck are you talking about? And I, I watched you, you lie. And then I, I didn't I punch you, by the way. You, I'm sorry that I didn't uh, you uh, hit you across the face in a proper slap, but I was hitting you. It was not punching you. Babe, you're not punched. Don't tell me what it feels like to be punched. You, you know, you've been a lot of fights, been around a long time. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, I, when you fucking have a close You face. didn't get punched. You got hit. I'm sorry I hit you like this, but I did not punch you. I did not fucking deck you. I fucking was hitting you. I don't know what the motion of my actual hand was, but you're Fine. I did not hurt you. I did not punch you. I was hitting you. How are you? Sir? How? What am I supposed to do? Do this? I, I'm not sitting here bitching about it, am I? You are. Right. That's the difference between me and you. You're a fucking baby. Because you start. You are such a baby. Grow the fuck up, Johnny. I did start a physical fight. Yeah, you did, so I had because, to get the fuck out of it. Yes, you did. So you did the right thing, the big thing. The, you know what? You are admirable. That's you and Mr. Depp on that recording, right, Mr. That's correct. And you said you hit Mr. Depp, right? Yeah, I had to hit his body to get Ms. him Heard. out of the door. My question was, you said on that recording that you hit Mr. Depp, right? Yes, I did. And you accused there him of being go. a baby for not wanting to be in a physical fight with you, right? Incorrect. I accused him of being a baby for complaining about me hitting him when he was trying to get through the door. I was trying to barricade. Can we please pull up Plaintiff's Exhibit 368? And again, Your Honor, this is a recording of just Mr. Depp and Ms. Heard. Um, I'm going to move for the ex entire exhibit to be moved Guys, into evidence. I want you to hear this, but this is the problem. You know, she's just going through these recordings one after one after one. She just played a recording where Amber Heard said, I'll, I'll let y'all hear this, but this is a little aggravating. Anyway. Bathroom door when you were knocking on it. After a few times, I open and you know, you just commit, you just kept going, you just kept going, kept going. I tried to close the door three times, you know, please, please, okay. just don't, you know, and then wait, and then, then I, 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 I accidentally, I swear, when I was trying to close the door, I guess it scraped your toes and I didn't I, you know I didn't mean to do that and I bent down and you either pushed or you kicked I think you kicked the door open <clears throat> I mean so the, court, the door yeah more open so that it would I hit me and it hit no, me no I, I didn't mean wait. to I didn't know it that it hit me in the fucking head but I did not mean to do that. I don't I, know what I was about. bent down behind the door. I did not do anything to her. I did not kick a, a door or push a door so that it would hit you. I did not. I, I swear that. I, I mean, that did not. It was not my intention. I, I think I remember when the door scraped my toes, I, um, I, I reacted. But this whole the door thing, I, I, rem I, I never did that. That wasn't on purpose. I might have done it on accident. Okay, so let's say that was an accident. I then stood up. I don't even know if I said, I mean, I might have said like, what the fuck, what, you know, whatever, because I'd just been hit in the head with the fucking corner of a door. I'm so sorry, I did not, I'm sorry. And then I stood up, and then you fucking clocked me. I, I remember hitting you as a response to the door thing. Mm. <clears throat> you almost said Michi X, hell no. I'm sorry about hitting you with the door or, or hitting your head. I did not mean to, nor... You didn't uh, mean to hit me in the head with the door, but you meant to I didn't punch mean, me in the jaw. I meant to hit you, and I I, I did not do this thing with the door. I, I do remember, I did mean to hit you. So that you didn't yeah. mean? 
the door? No, God, no, I didn't. I'm, but punching me in the, in the jaw. I didn't. Okay, I'm sorry I hit you. I did mean to hit you, but it was in, a res, in response. I just reacted in response to my foot. I just reacted. And I'm sorry, it's below me. Your foot? That was why you punched me? Yeah. But but I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry if I... Dan, that's you and Mr. Depp on that recording, right? That's correct. And Mr. Depp was hiding from you in the bathroom. Incorrect. Isn't that right, Ms. Heard? Well, Mr. Depp said on that recording, I opened the bathroom door when you were knocking on it. Does he? he? I don't know if he said that, and I, I didn't hear that. And Mr. Depp said, Replay I was it. trying to close the door. I guess it scraped your toes. He says that, doesn't he? Correct. And then you kicked the bathroom door into his head, didn't you? No, I didn't. And, and I then you punched him in the jaw. defended myself in that audio. You can hear it for yourself. Right. And then you punched him in the jaw. I also did not do that. I tried to make that clear on the audio tape, too. So, in futility. So Mr. Depp said, you uh, meant to punch me in the jaw. She right? tried to make it clear in the audio tape? Are you asking me what he said on the yeah. on the recording? Yes, he said that. And then that means she knew they were recording. You, didn't you? I, as I explained yesterday, I was trying to get him off the door. And you said, I remember I did mean to hit you. Meaning the door. The door was on my feet. You've I reacted this, instinctively to that. Yeah, you've heard this audio before, haven't you, Miss Heard? Yeah, we've already had this trial before. Yeah, you've played, it was played for you when you were deposed in 2016 in connection with your divorce from Mr. Depp, wasn't it? That's one of the times I've heard it, yes. Okay. So you've had plenty of time to think about how to respond to this recording, haven't you? I don't know what you mean by that. Well, let's take a look at how you responded to it the first time. Can we please pull up what will be marked Plaintiff's Exhibit 1261? Guys, did you hear her say, I tried to make that clear in the recording? Like she she the knew she was recording. Your Honor, okay. Uh, yes. You. Oh, if you want to. And this is the thing too, and this is so hard. This is hard for every attorney, including me. Every single one. We will get into our flow, and we will fail to listen to what the person is saying. Uh, when she said, "Yeah, I tried to make that clear in the recording," your girl should have stopped. Now you, you you tried to make what clear in the recording, right? Like you knew you were being recorded. You're trying to make stuff clear in the recording. You're trying to make stuff clear for the future people that will hear this. So this isn't even really the truth. This is you acting for this recording that you've made, this audio that you've made, right? Also, she talked, She the, the third, if you go three recordings back, she had record. She played a recording for some reason, and she played it, and it was so great, talking about how Johnny was trying to leave, but she wouldn't let him leave, how Johnny was trying to de-escalate. Do you know what she did? Shout out to Camille. She played the recording and just moved on to other things. Like, Camille, slow down. Slow, let's, let's take these things recording by recording. You're just throwing them into evidence. Let's talk about them. Because if you don't talk about them, the jury doesn't really know, you know, why you even played it. Like, let's nail Amber to the goddamn, I'm trying to nail her to the cross. I still fly you out though, baby. I mean, I really would. I really would. Pick you up in baggage claim number six. I want you to wear that cream colored suit. So I'm gonna pick you up by baggage claim six and be wearing that cream colored suit. If I fly you out, don't show up to the airport in damn jogging pants. I'm gonna read it into the record. Have some respect. So um, I will. So your honor, for reference, and I will provide a copy of the deposition, Ms. Hurd's deposition in the divorce, it's uh, page 372 lines, starting at line five through 377, line 12. All right, thank you. Okay, I have the next copy. Can I approach your honor? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. I know y'all are saying that uh, there's a time limit. Listen to what I'm telling you. This is like money. Sometimes you save money, sometimes Honor, you spend it. Permission, may we please play? This is where you spend your money. Can we just get to that page, make sure. You don't save money right here. Oh, this is where you spend it. Yes, please. absolutely. This is where you spend your time, guys. 
page 372. When you're in the hospital and you don't try to save to money. 377 line one is what I have. 12. This is I'm game 12. time, guys. Some of y'all don't understand it. This is this is game time. This is fucking Amber Heard on cross. You take as long as you goddamn need. Y'all in the chat, man. This is, a, this is a take care's old broad, Six the Goddess. Kevin was never with Six the Goddess. Y'all are hardcore. Of course, Melanie King. Okay, all right. Listen, somebody's like, shout out to Richard Nixon. Richard's like, hey, Lee. You know, Tasha K was talking all that bullshit about the... <laughs> what's up with Legal Bites? Is she married or what's her deal? I like the way Richard, I like the way Richard Nixon is thinking. Richard Nixon is thinking outside the box. <laughs> All y'all fucking talking about Melanie King. Y'all are in love with Melanie, boy. Shout out to Jonathan says, do it for the culture. Jackie, Jackie says, no, nah, I want Melanie though. All y'all want Melanie. All right, now we're talking about some across the pond action. Talking about some Jessica X action. I, I, I still don't think it's an impeachment, Your Honor, after reading it. I'll overrule the objection. Go ahead. Thank you, Your Honor. If we can please have it published to the jury in the gallery. Darla says, Me, shout out to Darla. The next thing that I'm going to play to you uh, is Q. Would you listen to this, please? Shout out to Randy. Oh, sorry, guys. Let me take this down. Look how skinny she was. I can't hear shit. Eclipse is riding with AV. <laughs> this is like, what is up with AV? That would be cool because AV is in her third year of law school. She really only has one course left and I have just retired. So you have two ends of the legal sphere. Somebody coming in to the uh, the legal industry and someone going out. That would be cool. Might bring a nigga out of retirement. What? Shout out to AV. Here we go, Tasha K. I, I, I think the vast majority is, is either been between Melanie or Tasha K. <laughs> Shout out to bro, man. <laughs> Since you'll really be on that nigga here. <laughs> okay. Shout out to Tasha K. Please, uh, start it over. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I love you guys so much, man. Y'all are out here. Y'all make trials so much fun. Y'all make trials so much fun. The next thing that I'm going to play to you uh, as Q. Would you listen to this, please? I can't hear. I 
Can y'all hear? I can't hear shit. It's the same thing about the door thing. So you told him in that uh, uh, excerpt that you hit him with the door, but did not intend to hit him, correct? Did you say that? I, I said whatever I said in that recording. Okay. I don't, um, when you play it for me, it's hard for me to remember every single And that's a recording marked as exhibit. She's crazy. Uh, Q. 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 Would you continue to listen to exhibit Q? <clears throat> Are these from the same day? Uh, I, I reacted, but this whole the door thing, I, 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 I never did that. That was in my purpose. I hadn't done an accident. Okay. Right. Let's say that was an accident. I then stood up. I don't even know if I said, I might have said, what the fuck? You know, whatever. Because I just stood in the head with the fucking corner of the door. I'm so sorry, I did not. I'm sorry. And then I stood up. And then you felt the clock. I, I remember hitting you as a response to the whole thing. So on the tape, you tell Johnny Depp that you did mean to hit him. And it also misrepresents represents okay. what actually happened, which is him trying to get into a room. I'm trying to keep him out of <coughs> And then he runs the door over my toes, trying to get into the room. I try to push him out of it, which is what the hit is referred to. And Johnny, whenever he was injured or touched at all, was referred to it in these ways of punching or clocked or whatever. And whether you discussed it with him or not, the last thing you do in, in talking to him afterwards or trying to reconcile with him is to get into what the definition of those words mean to him. It's never, I never even addressed it. He would, if he was ever pushed, it was, it was a quote. He, he called it a, a cold clock. I mean, it's just very dramatic. Isn't it, it true? She's been fighting the whole time. She's always been a fighter. She was fighting in her damn smiling depositions. As that audio recording is being played in your deposition, aren't you, Ms. Heard? Not smiling because of the audio. I'm smiling because of what's happening around me. You even roll your eyes at one point, don't you? I was sitting opposite a whole table full of lawyers who were snickering, laughing, and rolling their eyes at me while I was talking. Yes or no? Is there something amusing about kicking a door into your husband's head? No, I was rolling my eyes and commenting on what I was experiencing at that time in yeah. recounting the story. Is there something amusing to you about punching your husband in the jaw? That is not what I was smiling about. And no, I do not think it's amusing. Ms. Hurd, you testified yesterday that all you want to do is move on. Do you remember that testimony? Yes, I do. Yeah, and your exact words were, quote, I just want him to leave me alone. I want to move on with my life and he won't let me. Do you remember that? Yes, that is correct. But that's not true, is it, Ms. Hurd? It is very true. You just haven't been able to move on with your life, have you? From Mr. Depp. Well, I'm here, aren't I? In fact, on October 11th, 2018, you actually commenced an arbitration action against Mr. Depp for defamation, didn't you? Um, I don't recall that, no. Your Honor, may I approach? May we approach? Shout out to Thad. That says that olive looking pale skin, a pale skin of dirty right behind JD is right for you. Who y'all got? Y'all got olive skin or y'all got, uh, y'all got Camille? I can't tell. You know, olive skin like she might be a little bit thicker. Olive skin. She got a little nerdy action going on, you know? 
I might let her leave those glasses on. I don't know. I don't know. Pull up plaintiff's exhibit. Everybody's got Camille. Shout out to Thaya. And Ms. Hurd, if you could please read to yourself the first page of exhibit 219. All right. Somebody said take both. Why I'm both out? I ain't got money like that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm retired. <laughs> We're going to do one at a time. <laughs> this inflation got these airline prices high as hell. And if you can also read to yourself the second page of Exhibit 219. Some of y'all are saying Candace Owens. If you can scroll down, Tom. Does Again, Candace so Owens? Does Candace have a YouTube channel? Look at that page. Guys, we have 5,000 people in here. Can y'all give me the 1.5 likes, please? Can we get to 1.5 likes? Thank you so much. Does Candace Owens have a YouTube channel? And then scroll down to the next page, please. I'm on a nigga head. On the next page. Shout out to Real Royal. Shout out to Tasha K. Shout out to Bill Reed. Said Bill Reed said, trust the old man on this one. Tiff Benson, I'm going to look her up right now. Tiff Benson. Let's see what she got. She's a YouTuber, right? She's got 88,000 subscribers. That reflection, Ms. Heard, that you did, in fact, in October of 2018, two months before you published the op-ed in this case, that's the subject of this case, you initiated an arbitration against Mr. Depp for defamation? It's not my understanding I initiated an arbitration. I, it's my understanding that our lawyers sent a lawyer, I mean, a letter to his lawyers after he called me a liar again, effectively, in an interview. And that's two months before your op-ed that was published in December of 2018, right? That is correct. And that's six months before Mr. Depp filed a case this case against you, correct? That's correct. So you fired the first shot, not Mr. Depp. I disagree. We sent a letter. Thank you. Yeah, shout out to Bill. This Tiff girl. What's up with her eyes? Is she Asian? Is she mixed? She looks like she's got some Vietnamese is her, in her. Isn't it true that you once filled out a customs form falsely so that you could get? May we approach? Okay. Uh oh, we're gonna be pleading the fifth. She filled out a false customs form. You know, immigration listening. I know immigration ain't about to get the whitest white woman in the damn world. <laughs> I know immigration is not about to get involved. Boy, grandma jumped up quick. Did y'all see that? Did y'all see how fucking quick grandma jumped up when she started talking about that false immigration form? Shit. Now I want to hear this. Now I want to hear this. Shout out to Bill. Shout out to Five says, how about Candace? Yeah, we were talking about YouTubers. You and Tasha K, you back that at me. It would, <laughs> that would, <laughs> I would do it for the culture. I would do it for the culture. Shout out to Brittany B said, Lee going, I choose you with security boss. She'll get you a date. I need to, I need to. <laughs> Rough out here. It is rough out here. Shout out to Brittany B. Shout out to Spread the Word, Lauren Melissa. Lauren Melissa recently, not recently, I guess she moved to uh, LA, right? She's on the other side of the world. 
<laughs> I'm in Atlanta, guys. I don't know why she moved way out there. I guess that's a spot to be, though. Shout out to, oh my God, this chat. I can't even pull up some of the bullshit y'all are saying. Said, uh, lead having angry Johnny Sex. <laughs> Johnny Sex was that, oh, it would be angry. It would be angry. I'm like, you remember all those 200 black women emailing me this bullshit because of your videos? <laughs> lead, that's my neck. Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Oh, God damn. Uh, <laughs> see, y'all saying Maggie, but it's like, you can't even treat Maggie like that. You know, you want... <laughs> Maggie's so damn sweet. You don't ever want to put the forearm out on Maggie, man. Maggie's just so damn wholesome. She's so wholesome. I would be eating so good, man. I wouldn't go... I wouldn't even cheat. <laughs> I would not cheat. You give me... I ain't cheating. Have y'all seen... Have y'all seen Maggie's food? She had this damn yesterday. It was this damn fried egg with bacon on a damn buttered and toasted English muffin just for breakfast. Just for, I was like, hey, I ain't going nowhere, baby. <laughs> baby, I ain't going nowhere. You cooking that for breakfast? For breakfast? Come on. Have y'all been on the dating scene? You think any of these women are going to cook you a damn? When the last time you had a buttered egg? No, a buttered English muffin. I mean, let's be real, guys. When is the last time you had a butter English muffin with some damn fried eggs and bacon? It's like, come on. <laughs> if y'all are dating, you know, do y'all think a woman's going to do that for you? Sir, you testified yesterday that when you left the courthouse after obtaining the domestic violence restraining order against Mr. Depp, you walked out to, quote, a sea of uh, paparazzi and cameras, right? That's correct. You testified that you were surprised to see the sea of cameras. That's correct. Because it was quiet when you went into the courthouse that morning. And the divorce had remained under the radar up to that point. You testified that no one knew about your divorce, so you thought it was going to stay that way, right? No, I always figured it would come out. I just trying to buy time. You knew the media had been alerted that you were filing for divorce, right, Ms. Heard? No, I just knew that it was impossible to do that privately. So you could just hope it was a matter of time. You, you knew they were going to be there, didn't you? No, I did not. The I mean, I assume, I assume since it's a public building that there is that likelihood or not likelihood, but possibility. But um, I was, you know, I was, I was shocked. Your publicist, Jody Gottlieb, was there at the courthouse with you, wasn't she? Yes, she was. So you anticipated that you might need your publicist? I thought Thank the you, filing might make, um, well, I was told the filing was public, that it would be impossible. There's no way for you to do a, a, fi a private filing. And then the second that I filed for the TRO, it would be public news. I didn't expect all these photographers and cameras to show up at the courthouse in real time, but they did. We could please uh, Thank you, pull Red Plains B. Exhibit uh, 1280, which is a clip from your divorce deposition. And you have at uh, page I can alert you. You have the transcript there, page 74, lines 22. You said 874. 74. Shout out to Massey. 22 through Eight. 75, line 13. I'm sorry, just 72 line. 74, line 22 through 75, line 13. Shout out to Kim. So hit the link, Tasha K. Come on up, baby. Let's make up. Okay. Shout out to Spread the Word. Still advocating for Lauren Melissa. Shout out to Lauren. What do y'all think, man? Shout out to Tasha K. You, listen, when Tasha K came out with that video, what did everybody notice? Everybody noticed that she was in that video. She had on this thin sweater, this little thin little pajama sweater and no bra. And she was like, they were like, God damn, Tasha K. I'm on a nigga head. <laughs> Everybody in shoes, she didn't have a bra on. Right? So then it's like, well, what the, 
Well, you know, she working with something. I ain't gonna be honest, man. Tell she working. With... Somebody says she got some double C's. Somebody said they look like G size. Come on now, she ain't G size. Come on now. Said uh, Dasha said double C isn't a size. <laughs> I didn't know that, man. Now, double. Now I've seen her in real life. I've seen Tasha K in real life. Oh, I showed up at her trial. <laughs> Guys, y'all see this trial like here on the damn screen? This is how it was with Tasha B, Tasha K and Cardi B. Tasha K and Cardi B. The trial started at 9 a.m. What time y'all think I got in that bitch? The trial started at 9. Y'all know who I am, how I am. The trial started at 9. Big double doors. Here come the lead. I throw open the doors. It's like 11 a.m. by 11.30. Everybody turned around. I was like, I'm here. I'm here, baby. 11 o'clock. Play and display to the jury. Plaintiff's exhibit 1280. Round by 11. Ms. Hurd, did you send a text message to Jerry Judge on May 24, 2016? telling Jerry Judge, quote, I'm desperately trying to reach Johnny. It's extremely important. Please tell him. She looks crazy. I remember sending the text message that is in front of me right now to Jerry. Uh, and I would like, I remember sending this because I wanted to tell Johnny or have him told by Jerry or someone who knew him or was close to him, basically I didn't want him to find out online that I had or was about to file or I had already filed for divorce. I wanted him to know verbally. So I was trying to reach him through a third party to tell him. When I say reach, I'm specifically saying I would like him to know information coming from me or coming from Jerry, from me, so that he finds out about the divorce filing or my intention to do so from some other source other than TMZ, which was alerted. Tasha got way more than this girl. You slipped up there, didn't you, Miss Heard? You let it slip out that TMZ had been alerted to your filing of the domestic violence restraining order, didn't you? I disagree. That's not what I'm talking about. TMZ is the same outlet that you released the video of Mr. Depp attacking the kitchen cabinets the day before this deposition was taken, wasn't it? I didn't do that. I don't TMZ know how owns to do that. the copyright to that video now, doesn't it? I have no yes, idea. Yes, because they flagged me. For that? I never got paid for it because I had nothing to do with that. So TMZ was just lucky in getting the inside scoop to your divorce from Mr. Depp, huh? I have no idea. It is not, that's not my area of ex expertise. I wouldn't even know how to do that. She lying. And also, what does that get me? If I wanted to leak things about Johnny, I could have done that in a much more successful way, in a bigger way, for years. Not when years. you were extorting him for $7 million? I got a fraction Damn. of what I was entitled to in the state of California, by the way. Yeah. What extortion? Tossa Van Ree is your ex-wife, right? That's right. She's my ex-partner. She's the one that told, that you told this jury Mr. Depp was jealous of, right? Yeah, well, that was a 2013 fight in, around March, yes. You testified that he tried to burn one of her paintings, right? That's correct. You testified he tried to burn um, one of your favorite paintings that she did, right? I don't know if it was one of my favorites. You committed domestic violence against Miss Van Ree during your relationship, didn't you? Uh-oh. No, I did not. You assaulted her at a Seattle airport in 2009, didn't you? No, I did not. And people saw that. That's not true. And it was covered in the press. Isn't that true? It was, a, it was planted in the press by Johnny's team two days after I got the TRO. Uh, not coincidentally. Can we please pull up plaintiff's exhibit 1279? Impeach her. Your Honor, may we approach? All right, they're about to impeach her on some violence. I don't know if you guys know this. You know, uh, apart from being the lead attorney, I am the lead mediator. I have the highest certification of mediators in the state of Georgia. And that is a specialized domestic violence mediator. So when there is a big uh, divorce case that involves uh, significant Domestic violence, they call me in the media the case. And some of these lesbian relationships are crazy. This is an article from two years ago, correct, Ms. Hurd? Violent. 
I don't know when this May was. of 2020. That's not when it came out. No. This story started getting planted in after I got a TRO, after I got a restraining order against Johnny. The hell, man, what is wrong the with y'all? Says, Amber Heard Objection, allegedly Your struck. Objection, Your Honor. I, I think Your Honor ruled that she can't say that. If you want to approach again. Shout out to the masculine. Y'all are just wild in here. I know, Keita, somebody tried to put me with damn nosy ho. <laughs> now, Bad Bunny. What's her name? Bad, uh, bad baby. She got fifty million off OnlyFans. I mean, that's a lot of money. If I would hoe out for Oprah, I guess I'd have to hoe out for her. The title reads: Amber Heard allegedly grabbed, struck her ex-girlfriend at the airport. Doesn't it? Yes, and that's not true. May we approach? Okay. All right, Camille, you're starting to bog down a little bit, baby. Shout out to Tan. Thank you so much, Tan. Leslie said, I got you, baby. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Grandma's starting to get her, you know, she wasn't making objections at all, but now um, Grandma's starting to, to feel herself a little bit. Starting to feel herself a little bit. But, you know, I really want Camille to just nail her. Every, every time she shows a video, nail her. Don't show a video and then go to another video. No, slow it down. Let's go video by video. Let's go photo by photo. You're running through them. And I know there's a time limit, but this is where you use your time. Shout out to Jessica X. And yeah, Camille is fucking. So the savage. article, the title is Amber Heard allegedly struck Jackson, her ex girlfriend. Honor, already, no, oh, over, oh, sir. Thank you. If I may start over. Andale. Amber Heard allegedly struck her ex girlfriend Tossa Van Rie at the airport in 2009. Did I read that right? Yes, this is another example of the smear campaign. So Mr. Depp is not the only domestic partner you've assaulted, is he, Miss Heard? I've never assaulted Mr. Depp or anyone else that I've been romantically linked to ever. No further questions, Your Honor. All right, cross examination. I mean, I'm sorry, redirect. It started, you know. Ms. Van Ray come out. She did good. She did good. Came in to make a public statement. It was false. Of course. She did. Objection, Your Honor. Hearsay. I, Your Honor, I should at least be <laughs> overruled. Thank you. Of course, she did. Okay. Now, let's talk about the TMZ alerted. Explain to the jury what you meant by the TMZ was alerted. Uh, so when you make these kind of filings, meaning divorce, uh, marriage, things like that, they are public record. And so when we filed for divorce, when I filed for divorce, I asked my team to file in the most discreet way, literally to put it under a stack of papers and file it at the end of day. So kind of had more of a shot of being missed by the paparazzi and by TMZ and those sorts of publicity outlets. I believe that we had been remarkably lucky following the divorce, that it wasn't picked up and that it gave me a, a precious few days um, of, of, of peace at that really fragile time. When I found out that they were going to run the story or that they had the information, I was trying to get a hold of Johnny to clarify that I did not do this in a punitive way. I didn't want him to be mad at me. I didn't, you know, I didn't want him to find out in that sort of context online. And who had connections to TMZ? Objection calls for speculation. Uh, do you know? I who? do know. John Your and Honor. I spoke about Your it. Your Honor, calls so, for speculation. So, so the objection. Did Mr. Depp tell you about who had connections with, Ms. with TMZ? Yes, we talked about it. His lawyer, Laura Wasser. Okay. Now, I'm going to start at the very beginning here. Um, you were asked by Ms. Vasquez about <laughs> Vasquez. why Mr. Depp won't or can't look you in the eye. And she read out, or she played a tape in which Mr. Depp said, you will not see my eyes again. You were oh, did you hear that? And that was look at Johnny during laughing. the mediation process in July, correct? That was Objection the leading. first one. 
sustained okay. escalating. Well, Grandma's getting this. spicy. That was in July of 2016. That was the first mediation attempt. We met after that, and Johnny very much looked me in the eye. Please tell the jury about the next meeting after he said you will not see my eyes again. We met in the lawyer's office. They gave us a moment. Johnny kissed me again, held me. I cried. He cried. And then we had a short exchange, and he put a note in my pocket that said, I'll love you dead or alive, my son, oh. with his new phone number on it. I'd like to bring up, Michelle, if you can, Defendant's Exhibit 1581L. Johnny's still laughing. Grandma got slick. Did you? Oh, you won't see my eyes. Shout out to Grandma. Grandma's getting spicy up in this motherfucker. I'm sorry. Grandma was like, in the 1940s, I was hot too, bitch. Like, it ain't just you. Fuck Camille. <laughs> Do you recognize this objection, Your Honor? Definitely. May we approach? Yes, yes ma'am. Did y'all hear? I mean, even Johnny busted out loud. <laughs> Grandma was like, do you remember when uh, Miss Vasquez came up there and said, uh, Johnny won't look you in the eyes? Was, oh, I won't look you in the eyes. <laughs> Johnny was like, oh. <laughs> Shout out to Johnny, man. Shout out to Grandma. Grandma was like, I was hot in the 1940s too, ho. You ain't the only one. You are not the only one. Shout out to all the women born in 1940. Tell the fuck up. Right? Shit. <laughs> you have breasts too, right? Shout out to all of the women. Like, you ain't, she is not lying down without a fight. Could you tell the jury what the coaster was that he slipped into your pocket, what it said? He said, I love you forever, my Slim, dead or alive. And what, if anything, did it have in addition? His new phone number. And, and to be, just so we're clear, on how many occasions in that second mediation did Mr. Depp look you in the eye? Um, many. Okay. And when Ms. Vasquez asked you if you knew why Mr. Depp couldn't or wouldn't look you in the eye here or in the UK, you said, yes, you know. Why? Please tell the jury why. Because he's guilty. He's, he's, he knows he's lying. <sighs> She's such Otherwise, a why actor. can't he look at me? I survived. Oh. I survived that man, and I'm here, and I'm <sighs> able to look at him. Thank you. You were I asked about a bruise that was on your arm from March 15, 2013. Do you recall how long before the picture you had sustained that bruise? I do. How long? Two weeks. You were asked a number of times by Ms. Vasquez, Vasquez. if you took pictures from your incidents earlier in the relationship. Yes. Why didn't you? It was something I started doing only kind of incidentally. You know, I was commenting to my best friend. I was looking for support from my mom, things like that. I, you know, there, there was, I'm ashamed to say, never a thought that, that this would happen. I mean, not until December and my best friend taking pictures of me to capture it, did that even, that wasn't even a thing. It has been suggested by Ms. Vasquez to you in your questions that you didn't tell anyone about the abuse until the TRO. Is that true? Objection, Your Honor. Leading. All right. What if any? All right. Shout out to Mr. Uh, Mustache. You Thank you so much, Mr. Mustache. Thank you. About the abuse during the time it was happening. Objection, Your Honor. Leading. That's not offered to. It's and abuse. hearsay. It's Sustained. Your Honor, it's prior consistent statement. It's, it's leading. It's there. sustained. Next question. Okay. <laughs> what, if anything, did you tell to anyone about the abuse? Objection, Your Honor. Hearsay. I'll sustain. Your Honor, Your Honor, may I approach? That's fine. Camille is fucking Amber. Oh, no, 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 no. Because so many women in this. Camille is fucking grandma. Grandma cannot win against Camille. 
Camille has been on her since day one. Camille is the objection queen. Shout out to uh, Mr. Besides. Thank you so much. Shout out to King Gua. Thank you. Shout out to Lou Casey. Says jury pivots towards Camille whenever she speaks and seems like they are not interested on her testimony. Someone in the actual courtroom. <laughs> yes. I mean, I think, I think Camille did an excellent job in just exposing how much Amber is lying. But also... Amber herself has shown to be very defensive. She doesn't give anything. She doesn't give an inch. And this is not the way you want to play it. You want to admit small things because they make you seem more human. But if you don't admit anything, if you don't admit one inch, people are not going to believe you. This is just a little tip. So Amber should be admitting, you know, the small flaws that she did instead of trying to look flawless like her porcelain skin, right? <laughs> Uh, shout out to Lou Kaisley, the Kaisley, the number one smooth cat. Shout out to Anthony. Uh, thank you as well. Anthony says the rush through and lack of explanation on each point makes it comes off more performative than substantive. Yeah, that's true. She's just rushing through it. But, you know, she did a great job and she had help from Amber as well, because Amber, she, she's just fighting too much, fighting way too much. Shout out to William. That hit, not punch recording should have been pressed harder. Exactly. You guys are seeing it. Like she was just running through recordings and not pressing each and every recording. That is true. You guys are, you're, you're absolutely right. Well, and this is what I was thinking as well. William is absolutely right. But that's even, even still, we, we still team, team Camille, man. She, she, she getting the Mr. ticket. How many people have you shared the fact of abuse prior to 2015. Objection, Your Honor. Leading how calls many? for hearsay. How many? Overrule them. Y'all want me with Vicki Diller? Roughly about 10. Can what does Vicki Diller look like? Yes. Objection, Your Honor. Hearsay. I think she can, it's not offered, it's just to show that she had, that she informed people before. They're suggesting- Action, Your Honor, can we approach? Right? This is, again, an approach. Camille is like, she is fighting. <laughs> Camille now is not giving in. Camille's hot. Camille is hot. Camille's like, oh, okay. You want to fight me, uh, Amber? Watch what I do to your attorney. Watch what I do to grandma. She's not even letting grandma get a damn question out. Shout out to MC Recovery and Wellness. Also, uh, thank you so much, MC Recovery and Wellness. Um, also, let me let me do this. Let me give a big shout out, a humongous shout out, because who knows when I get to this, but a humongous shout out to Co-Poet89. Again, you were asked, I just made you the entire sponsor of this. Um, Thank you so much. Whether you had consulted a medical doctor about any problems with your nose, correct? That's correct. And you indicated that you, in fact, had after the divorce, Objection correct? Objection leading. I, 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 did, did, you, leading. did you or did you not consult an ENT after the divorce? Objection leading. That's leading. Did you produce medical records to the defendants relating to this? Objection. Leading calls. Right. I'll sustain the objection. Thank you. And, and next question. Honor, we could, uh, yeah, witness could be instructed not to answer until I right. lodge my objection. Wait for the objection, could, please. Could we bring up defendants? Camille is on the ass. Do you recognize this document? My, my screen is black. Oh, sorry. That's a racist. Yes, I do. And, and could you tell us what it is? That's the uh, what my ENT, the ears, nose, and throat doctor, um, told me throat. was objection, my, Your Honor. Here, say. All right. I'll, when there's objection, please stop Sorry, talking. You. Thank you. All right. I'll sustain the objection as to hearsay. Okay. Uh, I, I'm. Uh, She's got her stumbling. Look at Camille listening. Look at her. What if any? You were asked if you had, 
it was suggested that you had not produced this in discovery. Is that true? Objection, Your Honor, leading. Your Honor, she, and, she absolutely so did it's, that. It's leading. It is leading question. Grandma's getting paid $6 million for this, guys. What, if anything, did you do to produce medical records to the defendant, to the uh, plaintiff in this case? I turned over all of my devices and they had a, um, the, Johnny's team had a third party or someone they selected as a third party go and pull all relevant documents from those devices, which I handed over. Do you know how many were handed over? I, I, hundreds of thousands, I believe. Maybe, maybe. Objection, Your Honor. Lack of foundation. Okay. All right, I'll sustain the objection. Jesus okay. Christ, Camilla's <laughs> fucking grandma. You, what, if anything, did you produce to the plaintiff in connection with your consultation with an ENT specialist? Relating to your nose. Objection. Leading. Sustained. Foundation. Here's her. <laughs> wow. It's not the cure all. It's sustained. Wow. Grandma's thinking. She can't even. She's stunned. When did you see an ENT specialist? 2017 or 2016 or 17. And as a result of that consultation, what did you learn about your nose? Objection, Your Honor, hearsay. I'm not asking her to tell what they said. Yeah, I'll sustain the objection. Oh my God. Six million dollars grandma's getting paid. Look at grandma. Look at her in the podium. She doesn't even know how to, she's thinking. She's thinking of how to ask a question. What if any production That's Alzheimer's. did you make to the plaintiffs of your medical records with the ENT. Objection, Your Honor, lack of foundation. If you, lay, if you only have foundation. Do you know whether the records, medical records uh, from your EMT were produced in discovery? Objection, in Your Honor, lack of foundation calls for speculation. I'm just, I'm I'm asking. Overruled if she knows. Thank you. Yes. Shout out to JP, thank you so much. And you're right, JP. And do you rec do you recall? Thank you, JP. I'm trying. I'm trying. Um, she said she's trying. What? She can't even anything. think. Six million dollars. The medical records reflect about your nose. Objection, Your Honor. Hearsay. I'll sustain the objection. Oh my God! <laughs> do you have injuries to your nose? Yes. Please describe those to the jury. I have um, I'm a bunch of scar to tissue. The, I'm going to object to the extent it calls for hearsay and lack of foundation. Oh, oh, overruled. An improper expert opinion. Well, I, we'll she can certainly testify to. We'll, we'll see where it goes. Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. I have um, a significant amount of scar tissue in my nose. Objection, Your Honor. I'll sustain the objection. What, if any, difficulty do you have oh bleeding? Oh, my God. Objection, leading. What, if anything, and that does cure on no, it doesn't, but oh, I'll, I'll, I'll overrule the objection. Thank you. Do you remember the question? I have um, a significant amount of trouble breathing at night, and I have been putting off having surgery for it. Grandma is getting were bent asked over that podium. About December 15, 2015, and Ms. Vasquez suggested that you did not report the abuse or the injuries to Aaron Falati. Do you recall Objection, that? Objection, Your Honor. Leading. Yes. Your Honor. I'm entitled to go into what Ms. Vasquez is. Objection is leading. I'll sustain the objection. Okay. Wow. Look at her just thinking. She doesn't know what to did say. You report. What Camille is fucking this girl. Aaron Filotti. Caesar, you're crazy for saying that. The abuse you sustained on 12 15 2015. Objection leading you're and hearsay. Guys. <laughs> Guys. Our girl, our champion, our heroine Camille has grandma bent over that podium. Bent over on her back. <laughs> However that works. However, that works. Camille coming with that fire. God 
Damn, shout out to Camille, man. Jesus Christ. Shout out to Technological Chaos says, uh, Amber Heard looks skinnier than me on, on Kenya in America. Red Cross examination commercial ticket in the heart of the angels. Shout out to my man, Technological Chaos. Always supporting your boy. Shout out to uh, L.A. Will, Thin Black Line. Thank you so much. Shout out to Perseverance Chameleon. Thank you so much. No comment, no question, just the pure love of the game. Grandma wishes she could turn herself into a damn chameleon and just blend in with that damn that damn podium. This girl in this white is wrecking grandma. If if I was if I was grandma's grandson and I'm watching on this TV, I'm gonna have to drive to the courthouse. Like we, me and me and Camille are gonna have to talk. You can't do my you can't do grandmama that way. You can't do my grandmama that way. You know, I know she's getting paid $6 million, but it's my grandmama. <laughs> you know, ease up. Let my grandmama think. Like, let her say something. Yes, she's an attorney. Yes, she's getting paid $6 million. But Camille gonna have to see me. <laughs> you ain't gonna do my grandmama like this on national TV. Have some black dude in a gold tie in Atlanta talking about my grandmama. No, Camille. No, Camille, you ain't doing that to mama. Not to my grandmama like that. Shit, where's the respect for the older generation? God damn. This is so, you mean, who's gonna hire? Listen, I don't know. You guys I can't really feel this. Y'all are attorneys. You have a, a performance like this on national TV where you can't even think of asking a question, who's going to hire you? When you're getting embarrassed by some hot Mexican hot tamale, that, is that racist? Uh, you're getting embarrassed. And you have you are twice her age. You have twice the experience. I know for a fact grandma's been practicing for 40 years. She's been practicing for 40 years or she's been practicing one goddamn day. And you're letting Camille do this to you? You're letting the, the spicy senorita do this to you? Why did I introduce race like that? Y'all forget that. <laughs> Shout out to all the... <laughs> it's fucked up. How are you supposed to work after this? Shout out to... Uh, it's crazy. Shout out to Amatea Nope. We got Amatea Nope in the house. This is embarrassing, guys. This is what y'all are laughing at this, and it is messed up. But as an attorney, I'm like, oh, you know, because it's like, man, everybody has rough days. But to just have it shoved down your throat immediately and then just constantly, you, there are cameras, there are people in the back. There is your client. Your client is looking at you. Amber's looking at grandma, and grandma's standing at the podium like this. Just shell shock. She's like, okay, well, ah, uh, she's scared to say anything. She's scared to say anything. Okay. Tell us about the scar tissue. Objection, Your Honor. Foundation leading sustained, but Your Honor sustained. Oh, uh, okay, I'm thinking. Oh, get grandma, somebody man. I paid you $6 million and you up at the podium talking about you thinking, you thinking about how to ask a question. You've been practicing for 40 years. I paid you $6 million. Look at the jury. I mean, look at the audience. They're all listening. They're all like 90% women. Everybody showed up to see Johnny. But they're all looking at grandma. The embarrassment, guys, is what I'm trying to tell you guys. Is what I'm trying to get across to you. Y'all aren't really feeling it. Y'all haven't been at the podium. I've been at that damn podium for 20 years. You feel it when people are looking at you. The grandma's on national TV. <laughs> grandma has like 300,000 people at one time in one chat watching her over in damn Law and Crimes. And she's not able to ask one question. This is so embarrassing. This is so bad, guys. Shout out to grandma, man. Oh, somebody get grandma. Shout out to Gail. Thank you so much, Gail. Shout out to Gerber, baby. <laughs> man, I cannot believe y'all. Who do we have? We have we had Camille show up. We had the Gerber baby show up. Y'all are on it. Uh, set 5,700 people in the chat. Can y'all give me the 2.5 likes? 
Do y'all think y'all can get me to 2.5 likes? Thank you so much, Jerry. This is crazy. Look at grandma up there. She is floundering. And it's one thing when you flounder and you got paid, you know, $3,000, $5,000. Now, some of y'all aren't going to want to hear that. Some of y'all are going to be like, well, lead, if I pay $3,000, I deserve great service too. And you're right. You deserve competent representation no matter how much you pay. But I'm just going to be real with you guys too. You know, if you get, if you pay $3,000 for your attorney, you're going to get a level of service. But if you pay $6 million, if you pay $6 million, I mean, that's top shelf. And Amber is not getting top shelf. Did you tell Nurse Falati on 12-16-2015 about the injuries you sustained from the 12-15-2015 attack? I did. Um, I believe I sent her pictures, too. Okay. Um, and did you text with Nurse Falati on 12-16-2015 about the injuries that you had suffered as a result of Mr. Depp's attack on you on 12-15. Yes, she guided me through a concussion check. And did you tell Connell Cowan about the injuries you sustained? Objection, Your Honor. Hearsay. It's prior consistent statement. I'm going to sustain the objection to this. Grandma has no idea about evidence 101. She just doesn't know it. Do you recall Dr. Laurel Anderson testifying that she saw two black eyes? Objection, Your Honor. Leading. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> what, if anything, do you recall from Laurel Anderson's testimony in this case about what she observed on 12-17-2015? Objection, Your Honor. This is outside the scope of cross-examination. Prior consistent statement. I'm going to sustain the objection. Jesus! The same day. Sustain the objection. Next question. May, may I approach? Okay. God damn! If I was Amber Heard, I would stand up and be like, bitch, I want my money back. <laughs> I want my money back! I paid you $6 million and you can't ask a question? $6 million? Okay, Elon paid the six million, but I had to suck him off. So it's like I paid it anyway. I want my blowjobs back. Give me some, give me the blowjobs or give me my six million back. Give me something. You are not, you can't even ask a question. This damn Mexican girl got you fucked up. <laughs> Shout out to all mi gente, la raza, right? Y'all, ustedes saben, o sea, no es racismo ni nada, o sea. Y'all know I love the fucking Mexicans, but god damn. Grandma's white. <laughs> when in December did you see Dr. Laurel Anderson? This is fucked up. Objection, I, lack of foundation. Overrule. I saw her two days after the attack. So on what day did you see her then? Um, that would have been the 17th of December, 2016, when I told her what happened. Objection, Your Honor, hearsay. No, sustain the objection. And w when did you uh, see Dr. Connell Cowan? I saw him the next day, December 16th, is my best recollection. This is so bad. Let's jump to East Asia for a moment. Um, and we saw Thank a you number so of much, pictures from the backless dress. Um, yeah, wine and chill's legit. What, if any, motivation would you have to claim that Mr. Depp was kneeling on your back knowing you had a backless dress. Objection, Your Honor. Um, leading I, I think I can bring calls for speculation. It's still, it's still leading. I'll sustain the objection. Okay. Why would why did you say that Mr. Depp was kneeling on your back in East Asia? In the closet of the hotel room in Tokyo, um, I said that because it happened to me. And it would have been much more convenient if I was making it up to not include that detail, knowing I had a backless dress and I walked a press line and got photographed. Now, we've heard testimony about Mr. Depp uh, making a total of 65 million in 2015 and 2016 from his experts. 
Objection, Your Honor. Why leading? You, I haven't asked the hearsay. Question. I mean, why did you not ask for thirty-two point five million for Mr. Depp? Your Honor, leading. I said, why did you not ask? Relevant. Oh, the sustain the objection. Sustain the objection. Jesus. Why? Why can I just ask? Why did you not ask for thirty-two point five million? She's asking what she didn't ask. Mr. Depp. I don't Asked want and answered, relevance. Oh, overruled, good. Because I didn't want it. <laughs> I realized that that's what I was entitled to, but I didn't want it. That's oh my important. God. Is AV still in the chat? Shout out to AV. If AV's still in the chat, you can come up, baby. Jesus Christ. Shout out to the Corner Cat, man. Thank you so much, Corner Cat. has you laughing quite a bit. Can you tell the jury what the context of that particular tape recording was? I don't really recall a whole lot about what was going on. I know we had been fighting kind of ad nauseum and in this sort of loop, if you will. And I'm doing my best to um, not show my pain. That's what I was trying to do, I was trying to be tough. Yeah, that's what we're all eating out I'm here. Sure Jesus, kind of chicken and pancakes. Now, Ms. Vasquez asked you about how you got your role in Aquaman. Could you please describe to the jury how you got your role yes. in Aquaman? I auditioned, not Johnny. I auditioned. I worked really hard and I went to where we were filming the, the first movie, Justice League. I went, I think, five or five and a half months early before filming commenced when I heard that they wanted to fire me. And so I put myself in the job. In the Jackson, gym. your honor, hearsay. To stay. Keep it away. I worked what, really what hard. Jesus. I worked really hard on that and had to prove myself. And I did that for, even though I was only filming for six days, I was there for six months. Just worked my butt off. That's what if why. An, what if any role did Mr. Shout out to Mr. Play Mustachio. Play Thank you so much. Oh, yeah. He tried to have me fired from it. Objection, Your Honor. Speculation. All right, I'll sustain his speculation. Wow. How do you know that he tried to have you fired? Objection, from Your him? Honor. Calls for speculation and hearsay and lack I'm of foundation. Founda I'm trying to lay a foundation. All right, if you lay a foundation. I saw it. I saw the emails. I saw the text. I'll sustain the objection as to hearsay. Next question. <laughs> <laughs> about Isaac Sit Bailey down, Grandma. And, and Jesus. That he saw no marks. What is your recollection of your interaction with Isaac Baruch during the week of May 22nd? I saw Isaac when I was coming or going, meaning I was leaving or arriving to the building. I saw him at a distance. We did not have a, a in-depth conversation, nor would we. Um, and I told him actually right after it happened That's what his friend had done. Objection, Your Honor, hearsay. I, I don't think it's offered to prove the truth of the matter mm -hmm. asserted. I'll sustain the objection. Next question. <laughs> she needs to go back. Stay away from what was said. Can you just tell us what what interaction you had with to him evidence and, class? And his opportunity to observe you with absolutely no makeup. Objection, That's Your Honor, muscle. leading. I'll sustain the objection. Just leading. Please describe for the jury your interaction with Isaac Baruch during the week of May 22nd. Well, not only did I have makeup on, but I, I did attempt to kind of let him know what happened. Objection, Your Honor. Hearsay. I sustain the objection. Next question. You were asked some questions about Officer Melissa Science's testimony. What if anything, do you recall relating to Officer Melissa Sines' testimony relating to your injuries? Objection, Your Honor, hearsay. Your Honor said I could redirect after the cross-examination. Man, this is so embarrassing. You guys don't know this, um, but in law school, they teach us a class in the first year. It's called evidence. <laughs> and evidence is where you learn about, number one, how to make objections but you also learn how to defend against them. So when they're going up to this bench, when they're going up and talking to the judge, grandma needs to be like, listen, judge, the, she's objecting to everything, number one, all right? So no matter what I say, we're gonna get an objection. So don't, don't be leaning into her. But number two, this is why these things, these objections are not, are not proper. 
You know, this is why what I am saying, this is how it comes in into what? Into evidence. What the what what Camille is objecting to, she's saying that what uh, these questions and these answers that are elicited should not come into evidence. All of this is about evidence. Grandma needs to explain why her questions are eliciting good evidence and why they are proper questions. And she's not doing it. Grandma has been up to talk to the judge 20 times. And I promise you, this is not the last time that they're talking to the judge. Camille is embarrassing this lady. Shout out to what, EB. What, anything, do you recall Wine and chill, Officer man. Stein's She's legit. testimony in this case relating to your injuries and the property destruction? I recall her saying that she didn't feel that my, the state I was in um, was enough of an injury to her or wasn't injury seeming to her. And what about the property damage? She claims she did not see any property damage, but I walked with her over broken glass. So I i don't know why she's saying that. Sliced up feet. What, if any, interactions did you have with Alejandro Romero during the week of May 22? I spoke to him briefly. Objection, Your Honor, to the extent it calls for hearsay. Uh, overruled at this point. I spoke to him. I just I spoke to him briefly in passing as I was entering and maybe when when I was exiting the building, but always when I was on my way out or in from being outside, meaning makeup. I had makeup on always, as I do. Why did James why did James Franco visit you on the evening of five twenty two to here we go? Mm. Objection calls for speculation. Do you know? Yes. Please tell us. Because he was my friend and he lived next door, quite literally lived next door. And I had frankly exhausted my support network with my usual friends and support was network. Happy to welcome as much friendship at that time as I could possibly get. Support now, the video network showed him laying his head on your shoulder. Can you describe for the jury what the interaction was without saying what was said, what the interaction was that led to that? He Jesus uh, Christ. After seeing my face. Put his Objection, head Honor, on my calls shoulder. for speculation. It doesn't call for speculation. If she sees that he sees her, he, he touched no. the side of my I'll face too. The objection. And, and okay. Again, Your Honor, if we can instruct the witness, if to you could wait till after the objection, please. Camille is on what, the nibble here. What did Mr. Franco do uh, on the elevator before laying his head on your shoulder? Touch my he breast. Touched the side of my face and responded to what he saw. Oh my God, this is so bad. We talked about the, uh, you were shown a bunch of uh, newspaper headlines and there was one in particular referring to sexual violence. Uh, what, if anything, did Mr. Waldman do to you relating to that article? Objection, Your Honor. Lack of foundation calls for speculation. What did he do to her? Unintelligible. I, I I don't understand. She said unintelligible. <laughs> That's not even an objection. Uh, he Camille making shit up now. <laughs> that had that headline on it that he leaked and threw it at me at the UK trial. We were unfortunately sat kind of actually literally next to one another with COVID spacing in between us, and he threw the paper down at me as he sat down with that on the cover. And where was that? in the UK at the UK trial. Objection, Your Honor. This is beyond the scope. That's not beyond the no, scope. Overruled. Thank you. Shout out to D Baker. Y'all go look at that D Blake. The makeup and go Mr. look at Walton. that Tasha K video. Because he was calling me a liar and a hoaxer and that this was an elaborate hoax just to get Johnny. Objection, Your Honor. Hearsay. I'll sustain the objection. God damn. Amber, look at grandma. Amber, look at that grandma like bitch. <laughs> I know I didn't pay you six million for this. Yeah, okay. Um, I don't have any more questions, Your Honor. All right. We're done here. Of course you don't. You don't know how to ask them. Listen, guys, y'all don't know what y'all just saw right there. Y'all saw a decimation. Next That's fine. Camille decimated. Grant, look at Camille smiling. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and take our afternoon recess then for 15 minutes. Do not discuss the case with anybody. Guys. Okay.
If I was Amber, I'd turn right back around, look at grandma and say, you're fired. You're fired. I'll do this by myself. <laughs> you're not asking questions. Guys, they're going to take a break. That shit, let me hit it one time for Camille. Hit it. Well, let's take a look. Look at Camille smiling. Look at her smiling. Camille, no, she just. Live witness, remote witness, or deposition. Camille deposition. just. We'll get the TV set up for that, and let's just come back then at three thirty. Okay. All right. Thank you. That is elder abuse. Shout! Somebody arrest Camille. Send the bailiff. Put the goddamn. Put the handcuffs on Camille. Look at the hugging. Oh my god. <laughs> I was telling you guys the whole way through. I was like, y'all don't know what y'all are looking at. This is fucking murder. And she gets right. She hugs the lead attorney. She hugs. She, I'm telling you guys what y'all saw was a murder. You saw a fucking murder in the damn courtroom. Grandma got murdered. <laughs> she hugged Johnny Depp. <laughs> Hell no, y'all got a nigga sweating. <laughs> Come on, man. Did y'all? <laughs> I... God damn, y'all... I wish I could give her a hug. Somebody put me in. Let me, let me give Camille a hug. <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> y'all saw a murder. It was a judicial murder. <laughs> when you give your client a hug. <laughs> oh my God. Look at hot. <laughs> Y'all don't, you don't, you don't see attorney. Uh, guys, what you do, it's the hugs that set it off, man. It's the hugs. I mean, every, I can't even explain. Let me move on. Shout out to, shout out to JB, man. Let me move on. The goddamn hugs is what just, it just said. <laughs> oh my God, you're fired. You're fired. If I am Amber Heard and I see a fucking 33 year old, you know, hot tamale, give the lead, give her lead attorney a hug. And then after she hugs the lead attorney, she, she hugs Johnny Depp. And Johnny Depp's all like smiling and every, everybody's congratulating the hot tamale. And I paid your ass, grandma, I paid you six million dollars. Six million dollars? You're, you're fucking fired. I don't, we'll start this bitch over. I'll do a mistrial. We're doing something. This, you're going to let this be done to me? And I paid you six million. Mm -mm. Not to me. Why me? <laughs> you guys, I wish I could just. There's just there's 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 twenty years of of courtroom experience. I wish I could just give this to you guys. It's so fucked up what y'all just saw. It's so bad. It is so. Bad at any rate, man. Thank you so much, JB. I appreciate it. It's super, super generous. What does JB say? Nothing, no comment, no question, just the pure love. Thank you so much, JB. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hey guys, we got about 600 people, 6,000 people. I got 2.8 likes. Y'all think y'all can get me to three? I know I need to be giving y'all commentary, man, but I, I'm a fan. I, I'm, you know, I'm watching this shit. I know I'm supposed to comment on it, but I, I, <laughs> I'm getting so much enjoyment from just watching it. But can y'all get me to 3.0 likes? Thank you so much, Jane. I, I don't, I feel like you're not getting your money's worth. 
because I'm not doing enough commentating. But that shit, when the hugs started getting passed around, when the hugs started getting passed around, I had to lose my shit. <laughs> Shout out to all the fucking hot tamales wrecking grandmothers. Hell no. I mean, the evisceration was one thing, but the hugs, the, I, what I'm trying to tell you guys, y'all don't know this shit, right? Y'all don't know it, but I'm, what I'm trying to tell you is that the hugs, it was the hugs that was the fucking disrespect. You know, if, if, if you fucking, <laughs> if, if you murder me in trial, okay, you know, that's bad. But if you're going around after the murder, going around high-fiving everybody, high-fiving, like you're going to high-five in my fucking face? You're going to fucking hug everybody when the cameras are rolling? You're passing around hugs? No, I mean, there's no higher level of disrespect. Guys, it was just so fucking disrespectful. <laughs> I can't explain how disrespectful that shit is. Like, you just got crushed. You got crushed. And every attorney, every attorney has been crushed because of what our clients have done. You know, our clients will get up there and lie. Our clients will get up there and forget all the preparation that we did on Sunday, all the preparation that we did on Saturday, all the preparation that we did on Friday. It's Monday morning. You get up there and you fucking nut up, man. And we get rolled. Now, if we get rolled because you fucked up and, you know, I did the work to prepare you and you just went fucking rogue because you cracked under the pressure, you know. I'm just going to be honest with you. I'm, I, that's not on me. You just don't have the personality or the intelligence, one or the other. It could be, you could be smart. You just don't have the personality to, to withstand scrutiny. It's a lot of pressure being up there in that witness stand. I've testified before. It's, it's, you know, everybody's looking at you. The whole fucking, the whole fucking audience is looking at you, the whole courtroom. So you feel it. And we can do mock trials and stuff, me and my law partners, we can do mock trials in the office, but it's not the same when everybody's looking at you. So if you get up there and you nut up and you start going rogue, all right, we got crushed. But if you're up there and you're fine and it's me and I'm at the podium, like you're doing your job and you paid me. So you're fulfilling your obligations and you paid me. And now there's this fucking 32-year-old hot tamale that's, uh, and, all right. And then she wrecks me. And I see you looking at me and you know that I'm being wrecked. And I see you looking at everybody else and everybody else is looking at you. And every you see everybody recognizes that I'm getting wrecked. And then I was like, well, I just don't have any other questions, Your Honor. And then you come off the podium. But if I look over and the hot tamale is hugging her lead attorney and then goes from hugging her lead attorney to hugging the damn client and then goes from hugging the client to hugging the second chair and everybody's hugging her. You just don't see that. I mean, you just didn't. That was a fucking murder. And then like salt in the, it's the salt. Shout out to the salt, but it's the fucking salt of the hugs. Let me move on. I, I, I just, I'm, you know, shout out to y'all. Y'all are going to go about, about y'all's day. I'm going to be thinking about that goddamn hug. <laughs> I'm going to be eating dinner tonight laughing about that goddamn hug. Like this, if I am Camille, I am freeze framing, freeze framing that just, a, I'll take a freeze frame of me smiling, hugging Johnny Depp when Johnny Depp's smile is ear to ear. I'm going to freeze frame that, clip it, start a new website tonight. I'm going on my own. I'm going, thank you guys for hiring me. It's been a great five years. I'm going on my own and I'm going to print money. I'm going, I'm starting my own fucking law firm tonight, <laughs> tonight, because now I'm in it. I'm, this is, I've won. Like this is, this is going to catapult my career. 
Like you just you just saw a fucking you just saw a young hot tamale earn her stripes. Everybody put Camille in the chat. Everybody, everybody put shout out to goddamn Camille. You saw a fucking attorney just earn her goddamn wings, boy. She earned her goddamn wings. Shout out to Bill Reed, says Gia Holland called it well, wine and chill. Uh, recovering lawyer, listen. This is what I'm telling you guys. We are all recovering lawyers. Shout out to AV. I don't know if AV's in the chat. AV doesn't know anything about being a recovering lawyer. I love to see just like new, I was going to say new booty, but I don't, don't want to say it like that. But it's like, <clears throat> if you're in prison and you're in prison for life and you've been in there, you know, 17 years and then the bus come up and you got the little, you know, the 19 year olds come in and the 22 year olds come in. And you sitting on D block, you sitting on the on the on the top, and uh, you just watching these damn twenty one year olds come in, and you've been on the yard for seventeen years, <laughs> just like oh, <laughs> shout out to AV man. So shout out to Bill Reed because when he says recovering lawyer, that's how it is. That is how it is. This is a tough game. This is an absolutely tough game. Shout out to Bill Reed. Thank you so much. He's exactly right. And wine is here. Come snuggle with the bullshit. Shout out to Snuggles. We're still waiting on them to come back, guys. They should be back probably in about six or seven minutes. <laughs> Shout out to Amber. Amber attorney. <laughs> we got, first we had the Gerber baby. Then we had Camille. Now we, now we got grandma in the house. What is uh my eyebrows are filled with tears of joy to discover this wonderful coverage of our lady Vasquez's cross examination while I recover <laughs> while I recover from recent knee surgery, chipping in a double burger so we can get her to one fifty. Thank you so much, Amber's attorney. Look at Amber over there. Y'all are so fucking. I love Y'all are so fucking awesome, man. Y'all are the best. Thank you so much for my recovery from knee surgery. Jesus Christ. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Amber Attorney. We got uh, Ego Podcast, Smooth Cats in the Booth. Lee's starting a petting zoo. Oh, yeah. Oh, the Lee's has some animals. I have had... You don't make it to my age, guys. I'm 45. I'm... <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 it's been some real ones. Shout out to Ego Podcast. Shout out to uh, uh, Flamingo D. These, God, I hope I'm not skipping too many super chats. I'm getting upset with this uh, streaming software. Shout out to uh, StreamYard. All right, Michael. Shout out to Miku. I'm gonna just go. I'm gonna read the 21s and ups, but I got so many to get through. Shout out to Jared as well. Thank you so much, man. Y'all just saw something crazy. Oh my God. Shout out to Lulu. Thank you so much, Lulu. I really appreciate it. Thank y'all to everybody supporting, man. I'm sorry. I should have been commentating more, but those fucking hugs pushed me over the top. I apologize. You know, 5,500 people in here. I want y'all to get y'all's value out of this, but you see Camille running around giving goddamn hugs. I thought they were going to put her on, on their goddamn shoulders. You know, when a coach wins and they put the fucking coach on the shoulders and they fucking running around with the coach on the shoulder. I mean, I thought they were going to put Camille on somebody's goddamn shoulders. Camille crushed Graham. It was a crushing. She should, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Is Vasquez a damn chef or what? For real. Shout out to Vasquez. <laughs> She's straight cooking them. Cocinando, right? Cocinando. She's fucking lighting it up in that goddamn kitchen. But that, <laughs> I, I wish I wish I could just, I don't know. I'm going to stop saying it. Shout out to Knowledge, man. Thank you so much. Jesus Christ. Man, Cole, Poet 89, giving grandma an old school woman, man. Jesus. And this is what makes me feel bad, to be honest, man, because y'all support me so much. My man... My man, Co-Poet, has sponsored Last Stream. And, you know, I was trying to be fair. He sponsored the Last Stream. I said it was, you know, co-sponsor. But, you know, to be fair, it was he was the sponsor. But I just made it, you know, co-sponsor because so many people were given. And he sponsored. When he sponsored, I was like, okay, we're just going to call a spade a spade, right? He's sponsored this one. But, you know, I feel like I could have given you guys more commentary at the end. But I just lost it. 
right? And I'm just human, guys, right? And so I feel bad when y'all support me so much. And, I, you know, I think I let you down a little bit. But I just, I want to give you guys commentary on what y'all are seeing. But, man, so when you support me so much, it's like, oh, I'm, it, it's hard for me to tell you how appreciative I am. Because I know y'all see me. I'm just human, right? I'd be fucking up, you know, struggle streaming. I tell you the shit's going to start at 9. I start at 9.15, you know, because you know, I'm black, right? <laughs> But uh, just thank you guys so much for your support. You guys have no idea how much the encouragement means. Because again, I had a thousand subscribers last last year, just a thousand. So in my head, to me, this still is a new channel. You guys look at the channel and you say, okay, well, you got a hundred thousand subscribers. But to me, in my mind, the channel's brand new because it's There's been monetized a year. In the tweet, I know that I didn't the, even get through these things. Sorry, we are just getting the, uh, back. But thank tweet, you so much for um, is a retweet for sponsoring or a tweet, this entire uh, that has stream. the hyperlink of the um, online option oh my God. in it. Um, and I, I know that a mere hyperlink without more cannot constitute. Uh, republication. However, here, when there's additional content uh, that could Thank constitute you, poet. Uh, republication in this matter, so there is evidence of ownership and additional content uh, that the jury could find constitute republication, and that is a factual question that does sub survive a motion to strike. Therefore, the motion to strike is denied as to count one. Thank okay. you, Your Honor. All right, thank you. All right, are we ready for the jury? All right. All right, let's go. Let's Sorry, guys. Let me get more, more composed. You just don't. You just don't see this bullshit running around hugging everybody in the in the middle of the goddamn trial. It's so fucking flagrant disrespect. But let me. All right. Let me. Let me pull it together. Let's do it. We back on it. Shout out to Kazen. Thank you so much, Grandma. What did Camille? Objection, Your Honor. Incompetent lawyer. <laughs> So true. Shout out. Let me hit it for goddamn Casey. Super generous. You guys are so generous with me, man, even though I be fucking up, man. Thank y'all so much. Shout out to King of Spades. Thank you for the cash out. Shout out to Leslie. Guys, we got 30 more minutes in the market. Let's see what we're doing. Okay, we're making a little bit of money. About 2%, 3% up. Let's do the Tesla watch. Tesla right now is currently trading. All right, your next witness. Where's Tesla? Our next witness is Mr. Io Tillett Wright, and it starts with counsel for Mr. Depp asking questions, and then we'll switch over to me. All right, thank you. Tesla's at 758. Right. Uh, good morning again. Just, have you had any communications with Ms. Bird at all, including text or emails or otherwise, in connection with your preparation for this deposition? No. I have you had any, when's the last time you spoke to her? April of last year. April or May. Let me just I'm let me right. just pause this for a second. What we're looking at, guys, is a video recording of a deposition. All right, and this is uh, I don't know who this is, but this is uh, Amber's attorney calling this this witness. When did you first uh, meet Miss Hurd? I met Amber in the end of twenty eleven. And where did you meet her? In Los Angeles. Let me pause this again. Uh, and, and I got to apologize to you guys for this. This A lot of times when they play these recordings like this, the audio is extremely difficult to hear. If you have you know, headphones or something like that, you'll be able to hear it clearly. But if you're just on your phone or something, it can be hard. And y'all will be like, oh, you know, turn the, turn the volume up, Lee. Turn the volume up. But it's not me. It's the court. This is the court's volume. So that's why it might be a little bit harder to hear. And what were the circumstances of the meeting? A friend was introducing us to each other um, so that I could photograph her for a large portrait series that I was doing at the time. And what was your profession in 2011? I was a photographer and I worked for the New York Times, I think. I don't recall exactly everything, but in 2011, you were both a photographer and separately worked for the New York Times as a freelancer. 
I worked for the New York Times as a journalist and photographer. And what was, what is your profession today? I'm a writer and a producer. Still looks weird. And between 2011 and through the present, have you had any other professions other than photographer, writer, or producer? Yes. And what are those? What's she looking at? I've hosted a television show or two. I made some podcasts. Thank you so much, Kita G. I. Wrote two other books. Uh, two books. So right, Keita three G. Books. Thank you. Three books. I've written three books. Um, a number of things. I don't know. There are more things, but I, yeah, I've always sure. been a multi hyphenate person. To the best of my recollection, uh, we initially met at a mutual friend's house which I think I already stated. Um, that friend is also an actor and had met Amber at the Children's Hospital while they were both volunteering and knew that Amber had done quite a bit of LGBT activism and uh, mentioned my project to her and then invited her over to, our, uh, the other friend invited Amber to her house so that we could all meet and um, Amber and I discovered that we liked the same books and we liked psychology and, and just, you know, laughed and had fun that night. And then I asked her if she would participate in the photo project, I think, or somebody did. And she said, yes. Um, a couple of days later, I went to the house that she was staying at and I photographed her for the project. And then thereafter, I went back to New York where I lived. And I remember her texting me and saying that she was shooting a movie in New York and did I want to get lunch? Um, so we got lunch and we became friends. Okay, please walk me through that. We met in 2011. We started becoming friends <laughs> soon thereafter. Shout out to um, Tres Leches. In 20, very early in 2013, um, I came to LA to spend a couple of months with my then, I don't know if she was my girlfriend or my fiance at that point, but the person that I was in a relationship with, um, in a very serious relationship with. And um, during the time that I was in LA, I spent more time with Amber. We both spent more time with Amber. Um, and I was introduced to Johnny, legends, Jesus Christ. And uh, the summer of 2013, I ended up moving to LA during which Amber and Johnny and I got even closer, very, very close. What? And then, um, we remained close, the three of us, for two-ish years. And then... All of this happened, this nightmare, and uh, yeah, Johnny and I you. stopped being friends, and Amber and I stayed friends. Um, and then Amber and I were friends up until the date that I told you that we last spoke. And at some point in time, uh, did you live on the same property as Johnny Depp and Amber Heard? Yes. So there's no one in the courtroom. They're all watching video. Everybody's mm -hmm. watching video, guys. It was August 2013 until um, I believe June 1st of 2014, I moved into my own house, so nine months. And um, why is it that you uh, left that property, left living there? Because I didn't want to live for free in someone's property and I wanted to have my own house and support myself. And for how long after that did you uh, stay close with both Johnny and Amber? I stayed close with both of them 
Um, I don't remember. It, it, it was a... Hmm. I, sometime in 2015, I think, late 2015, maybe, um, Johnny and I were no longer... I think the period when I really stopped considering Johnny a friend of mine was December of 2015. Okay. Well, let me ask you this way. Um, you never saw Mr. Depp assault or beat Ms. Heard on any occasion, correct? That's correct. I, I just would like to clarify, Mr. Preciado, that's a question you already asked me. So you're asking me the same question again about whether or not I witnessed Mr. Depp assault Ms. Heard? That's right. No, I have not witnessed that. Let me ask it this way then. Have you ever personally seen Mr. Depp assault or beat Ms. Heard on any occasion? No. Now, back to this same paragraph where it says, my experience of Johnny during the time that he, that we were close from 2013 through 2015 was that he could be incredibly kind, generous, and loyal. Um, can you give me examples of his kindness, generosity, and loyalty during that per period of time? Johnny, when sober, was lovely and magical and very funny. Um, Johnny, when sober, was incredibly lucid and um, imaginative and... I felt a kindred connection with him and a, a shared perspective on the world that I've shared with very few people in my life. Um, Johnny, when sober, understood how much influence he had over people and he was very um, kind to them about it and generous with talking to them about whatever came up and he was also when sober very um you know he made time for people's nervousness around him which i witnessed on a number of occasions he also um he had his his number of houses on that street and there was a constant rotation of different people coming to town who could all afford to live somewhere else or stay somewhere else who um, he would let and enjoyed having in those houses, which I find to be um, generous. In the next paragraph, paragraph six, you refer to uh, Mr. Depp's uh, struggles with respect to Oxycontin. You say that in late 2013, after dental surgery, he became hooked on Oxycontin. Did you ever experience him while he was on Oxycontin? Yes. And while he was on Oxycontin, did you ever experience uh, him to be mean or vicious? I can't answer that with any accuracy because I don't know whether or not the times that I did see him be mean or vicious, he was also on Oxycontin. In paragraph five, where you say that um, he could he could be incredibly mean and vicious, especially when he was drunk or high. When you refer to drunk or high, what substances are you referring to? The substances that I saw him ingest with my own eyes were cocaine and hard liquor, um, marijuana, uh, ecstasy, mushrooms, uh, wine, I, probably some other things, but those are the immediate ones that jump to mind. Um, cocaine and any kind of alcohol would bring out a very, very ugly side of him. Um, very misogynistic and cruel uh -oh. and <clears throat> other things. And um, 
when he would take any kind of psychedelic, like ecstasy or, or, or uh, MDMA, he would become paranoid. When he would drink alcohol, he would become paranoid. Um, yeah, I, I think that I answered your question. You mentioned that uh, you witnessed him having had cocaine. Did you ever have cocaine with him? No. Were there any drugs or, or substances that you uh, took with him? I don't smoke marijuana. I don't do cocaine. For the entire period that I knew Johnny and thereafter, I did not drink alcohol. There was a, I think, is one week in the chart? period um, during the peak of my breakup, during which Johnny offered me um, some pain pills to get through the intensity of that situation. Um, and that was the only time that I took any substances for three and a half years. No, that's not true. That was the only time that I took any. Um, AV, if you're in the chat, you can come up. With Johnny. Thank you and, so much, AV. Uh, yeah, all the other things that I had stated previously about what I do and don't do are also actually, actually you need to study. So for I'm tomorrow. sorry, just to, to summarize that, is your testimony that um, when you witnessed Mr. Depp drunk and high, you were not also either drunk or high? Is that your testimony? My testimony is that during the entire period that I knew Mr. Depp, I was never drunk or drinking or consuming alcohol at all. My testimony is that for a one, maybe two week, possibly two and a half week, I don't remember, period, um, on a sporadic occasion, I took some pain pills that Mr. Depp offered me for to get through an extreme emotional pain situation. Um, when I witnessed Johnny doing cocaine, I was not drunk or high. Other occasions that I witnessed Johnny drinking, I was not drunk or high. Um, there was a very narrow window during which I was taking some non uh, mind altering pain pills for a very brief period during which I witnessed Johnny drunk and high. Did you ever witness Miss Amber Heard drunk or high? Yes. And did you ever witness her drink alcohol? Yes. Objection. Did you ever witness her um, ingesting cocaine? Are you are you asking like ever in the history of time have <laughs> I ever witnessed Amber ingest cocaine? That's the first question, yes. The answer is right. no. Amber was vehemently against cocaine. Did you ever uh, witness her uh, smoke marijuana? No, marijuana is not her drug. What is her drug? I haven't spoken to Amber in a year, but as far as I know and have known her for the last 11 or 12 years, Amber doesn't have a narcotic of choice. Have you seen her ingest ecstasy? Yes, I believe so. Yes. How many times have you seen her ingest ecstasy? I can think of one instance in particular when she took it um, for her birthday, like a celebration. Uh, wasn't Do you recall what year that was? I'm an event. Other than the uh, narcotics and alcohol uh, that I mentioned, did you ever witness Ms. Bird uh, ingest any other uh, drugs? Are you asking me if other than what did you ask me about? Cocaine, ecstasy, and mushrooms. I've witnessed Amber taking any other illegal narcotics, or are you asking me about prescription medications? Can you clarify? Uh, narcotics other than prescription narcotics. I don't know, but I don't actually think so, no. Okay. Amber drinks red wine um, when she's not training, or let me rephrase that. Amber, when I knew her, drank red wine in the evenings uh, fairly regularly, with the exception of when she was training for an acting role. Uh, have, have you ever witnessed 
Mr. I'm sorry, Ms. Heard um, intoxicated? Yes. And how often would you estimate that you witnessed Ms. Heard uh, intoxicated? I, I don't know how to quantify intoxicated. If you're asking me how often I witnessed her drunk, is that your question? Yes. And where's um, strangely immune to getting drunk unless she's really drunk a lot. So I didn't see her drunk very often. I saw her um, drinking often, but I didn't see her um, out of her faculties. <laughs> Yeah. Shout out to Michael. Y'all are like, awesome in this day of chat. That is exactly I saw that right. A handful of times in the eleven years that I knew her. Shout out to Michael. And how would you describe um, how alcohol affects Ms. Hurd's personality based on your experience? You know, it depends on the circumstance. If it was during a moment when she was celebrating, it would make her loose like if we were salsa dancing then you know she would have fun and be fun and, and at a party and you know inebriated and dancing and having fun if she was in a stressful situation um i think it would just kind of exacerbate whatever the the feeling of the moment was i'm going to uh <laughs> ask you to state your name for the record. Nobody has yet. <clears throat> this is me. <laughs> <laughs> In case you have All right, go ahead. <laughs> Let's bring up uh, Deb exhibit number one again, please. Mr. Tillett Wright, you were asked some questions by Mr. Presidio. And I'm going to take you back up to the first page where you were asked some questions. Um, and he, he started out with, I, I'm just going to draw, draw your attention to paragraph four. And you indicated you met Johnny Depp through Amber. Uh, and you hit it off immediately. Do you see that? Yes, I do. Okay. And then you explained to Mr. Presidio that you considered Johnny to be a close friend and you cared very much about Mr. Depp. Is that correct? He became a close friend and I did care very much about him. I still care very much about him. All right. Could you please describe that relationship that you had with Mr. Depp up until I think you said December of 2015? Sure. Shout out to AV. You got AV <laughs> okay. in the Mr. house. Mr. Depp and I first met, Amber invited me over to his house with my then partner, girlfriend. I don't know if she was my fiance yet or not. Um, in I think February of 2013, right at the beginning of 2013. Um, <clears throat> and we all hung out, the four of us hung out in his house, um, in his living room and just kind of talked and got to know each other and it was sweet. I was mostly hanging out with Amber and kind of meeting this person. It was a trip to meet someone like that, you know, and see his house. And he was very friendly and very welcoming and very kind. Um, and then the next time we saw each other was at um, Amber and I both like to do what we call family dinners. So we invite people over and cook for them and, and have a dinner party and um, Amber did an elaborate family dinner at her house and Johnny and I and my ex and Amber and I believe Whitney were there. I don't know if anyone else was there. I'm sure somebody other people were there. I don't remember. Um, and Johnny and I really connected at that dinner. We were sitting either opposite each other or just catty corner from each other and um, I left feeling a very intense connection to him. And I was like, well, yeah, sure. Everybody probably feels an intense connection to him because of who he is. I'll forget it. It's ridiculous. And then a couple of days later, um, Amber had another dinner, some such, such a dinner at her house. And uh, Johnny and I had another really good time and, and felt 
very connected and really laughed a lot and whatever. And um, at the end of the dinner, as I was standing to leave with my ex, Johnny came up to me and said, um, I, I don't really know how to say this because it doesn't happen to me very often, but I think I love you. <laughs> and I felt strange because I felt the same way. And I said, that's funny because I had that same experience after the last dinner party too. And then we joked about how crazy and ridiculous that felt. Um, and we exchanged phone numbers and then he, he texted me wanting to talk about Amber a couple of times. And I felt that it was like Look kind of violating her privacy. So I said that I was happy to be friendly with him and happy to, um, I don't remember exactly what I said, but something to the effect of like, you know, I, I'm happy to be, to give advice or to, to help you guys stay in concert with each other, but I don't want to um, violate anybody's privacy with the other one. And he, I think he really respected that and really liked that because he also values his privacy greatly. Um, and then, yeah, I was in LA for a couple more months and I don't know, I think maybe we hung out more during that period. I'm not sure. Um, I don't remember if they came to New York during the next stretch of time or what happened, but um, basically by the summer, I came back to LA to write um, and had a very bad breakup with that fiance and oh. was going through some things personally that Johnny, um, you know, he was like, I recognize what's happening for you. Uh, it was like particularly bad anxiety related, trauma related things. Um, and he, I, I didn't expect him to offer me any support around that stuff, but he just was like, wait, I see what you're going through. Um, you know, this is my experience of it. I have the same thing and let's talk about it. And like, if you need anything, I'm here. And I was like, thank you so much. You know, I didn't really expect that. Um, and I went back to New York for, to be with my family for a couple of days or maybe a week or something. And um, it was very painful to be there. And he had said, if it's painful to be there, you know, just let me know and come back and stay here. And so I did. And I came back and I originally was going to stay at Amber's house because um, she kept her apartment for a number of years while they were together, even though she stayed at his house a lot um, that she paid for, et cetera. And I, she was, you know, the person that I'd known longer. So I felt more comfortable being at her house. And then um, the consensus was that I should be closer to them. And so I said, oh, there's this house that's just sitting empty at the end of the street. Just stay there. I was very hesitant because I didn't want to take advantage of him. Um, and he was insistent and he was very kind about it. And, and he said that he understood fully what having PTSD and anxiety could do and that he wanted to help. Um, so I, I went and I stayed there. And then that was, I'm guessing in August of 2013. And then in September, I think Amber went to England to shoot a movie. Um, so I was there and Johnny and I would hang out on our own and Johnny doesn't have a ton of friends um, because he can't. Thank you, Trucker. And, um, I would go up and hang out with him. You know, we really enjoyed each other. We really liked each other. And so we would just hang out, you know, on a daily basis, eat dinner or, or Thank watch you, movies Gita. and I'd hang out with his kids and got, you know, very like into like a very sweet uncle niece nephew relationship with his kids and they called me uncle Io and um Mr. Tillett right uh did you ever call Mr. Deb brother or your brother refer to him as your brother yes I did now I'm going to take you to paragraph five of Deb exhibit number one and uh Mr. Presidio asked you about this paragraph as well and at the end of it, you had said, and he could be incredibly mean and vicious, especially when he was drunk or high. What did you mean by that? What I meant by that was on a number of occasions, 
um, I saw, you know, Amber or he, I think also would ask me to come and help. He and I had more of a like mano a mano kind of relationship and she and I had a, I, I was kind of like the only person that was <laughs> of them. Um, Good. For I love y'all in the chat, and man. so they would both ask me to do that with each other. Um, so I saw him, for example, I remember there was a time when um, it was very late at night. I was down the hill. And so I went up the hill and he was outside by the pool with a glass of what I understood to be whiskey. And she was inside crying um, and very upset in the kitchen, I think. And then I went outside and talked to him for a long time. Um, situations like that, or, um, and he would say things, he said something to me that night that I, I thought, that night by the pool where I thought, Jesus Christ, you know, um, things like, she's gonna, you know, all she's got is her looks and, you know, she has no talent. And when her tits start to sag, um, <laughs> and her face gets wrinkly, nobody is gonna be interested in her. Um, for anything and she's so she you know better like to figure out another way to survive and shit like that sorry pardon me things like that and um i also witnessed him um when amber was in england marilyn manson and paul bettany came over at one point and there was a great deal of cocaine and alcohol involved that I witnessed them doing together. Um, I don't specifically recall if Mr. Bettany did or did not partake in the cocaine. Um, or really Is much that a nose ring? Except things that he said. I was wondering that too. <laughs> I didn't know if it was a light. That's a nose ring. That is a nose ring. What if anything did Mr. Depp tell you about yeah. his struggles with drugs and alcohol? And um, we sat on the couch and he told me a number of things. He told me about his childhood. He told me about growing up in Kentucky. He told me about growing up in, very poor and how his mom was verbally and physically abusive. He told me that when he was very, very young, like 13 or something, he started drinking and taking drugs, I think, or at least drinking quite heavily. And he was even kind of like, yeah, it's crazy. I know. This is actually a I've fair point, Shelly. Like a tank. And so that was kind of the nature of the conversation. Um, I'm sure that AV that knows evidence had... better than grandma. I got it, got it right there. <laughs> it's right here. <laughs> ever not drinking or ever not doing drugs. And he also told me that he didn't particularly enjoy being sober, um, but that, you know, people around Thank him you, were That's very a great concerned. Point. He was very, very um, concerned with his children. Love you too, he Mika. Thank you so much. Shame or regret about times that he had been inebriated to the point of falling down or embarrassing himself, you know, urinating on himself, things like that, when his children were around, and that he was very grateful to the people who had kind of shielded them and whisked them away. And he told me that um, in his relationships with previous women, uh, his drug and alcohol use had been an issue, um, but that he just didn't really like life sober and that it was too painful to be alive without um, imbibing or, or getting high. And um, he also told me that he, uh, had experienced great bouts of jealousy in relationships that had that had also led to a lot of drinking and a lot of um, rage activities. Um, he told me that that happened with Winona. He told me that that happened with 
um, Kate and sorry, Winona Ryder and Kate Moss. He told me that that had happened with Vanessa Parody. Mr. Tillett Wright, um, what if any observations did you make about <laughs> Mr. Depp abusing Oxycontin? Over the course of those two years, Mr. Depp told me verbatim that he was addicted to Oxycontin. Um, and I have a text message from him where he expresses that um, it's extraordinarily hard to kick and that it, um, I don't remember exactly the words that he uses, but he, he, he referred to it to me verbally many times as like the hardest thing that he's ever tried <laughs> to kick, which he's tried to kick most things. He said it was harder than heroin. Um, so he, he was very um, open and verbose about OxyContin, having gotten addicted to OxyContin. So what, if any, observations did you make uh, about Mr. Depp smoking cigarettes and joints, marijuana? Mr. Depp, as far as I could see, always had a cigarette or joint in his mouth at all times to the point where I was confused about how he could function. He also showed me his marijuana closet that had, I don't know, tens and tens of pounds of weed in it. What, if any, observations did you make while you were staying at Sweetser, I think you said that was August 2013 through May of 2014, with respect to uh, the type of alcohol and the amount of alcohol that Mr. Depp was consuming. When I saw Mr. Depp Forbes drink, questions are so um, bad. Mm -hmm. It was... What Shout if out any? to Jamie. Hard Thank liquor. you so much, Jamie. I believe it was whiskey. And Super generous. No comment, no question. Pure, maybe. Pure love. Um, could also be vodka. I don't know. He had a full bar in his, in 80, the house that they, with his recording studio in it, that they mostly stayed in. So, um, I know whiskey for sure. And there was also red wine, a lot of red wine. And when you talk about the whiskey and the red wine, how much did you observe Mr. Depp consume on any given occasion of those? Uh, I don't know. Thank you, Jamie. Shout out to the beautiful Jamie A. The one occasion I know specifically was the one that I mentioned before during the argument where he suddenly had a glass of whiskey. And I remember it being like, I remember clock because I grew up counting people's drinks. I remember clocking that it was a very large pour in the glass of whiskey. If you recall those, I, I think my question was, you know, what, if any, observations did you make or did Mr. Depp ever tell you about him blacking out? <laughs> Mr. Depp was very open <laughs> with everyone that he was a heavy user. And um, <clears throat> he told me about, I know there was one instance where he had this very large house property. So if Sweetser Avenue goes like this, um, the house that I was staying at, 76 is down here, then there's 78, which is right here, and then up here is 80, and then across the street, I guess, is 82. And 82 is a very large compound. So he and I were staying, I was at 76 or up at 80 and then 82, they lived in for a brief period of time. Um, and he told me about like vanishing into 82, into the, like the property into the like cause it was very lush and very, a lot of trees, um, and went up quite far up the hill. And he told me about kind of like blacking out and going in there on one instance. Um, he told me, I know that he told me that in Australia, um, he had blacked out. Um, but he also told me that he fucked up. So I don't know. 
in terms of specific blackouts, there were a number. There, uh, I think he said on the plane, he said that he didn't remember what had happened. What, if anything, did Mr. Depp say to you about whether he wanted to become sober and clean? Mr. Depp um, expressed to me that he wanted to get sober for Amber, that he didn't enjoy being sober, um, that it wasn't fun, and that it, it was distressing and exhausting um, and very hard to do. He didn't, he really, really um, resented having to be sober. Um, yeah, he didn't, he didn't want to be. And what, if anything, did Mr. Depp say to you about his perception of Amber's role in him becoming sober and clean? He expressed a number of times that he felt like she was his leash and she was holding him back from doing what he wanted to do in terms of substances and alcohol. Um, oh, I just want to go back to another incident that I remember he told me he blacked out, was on, on the island. He went to the Bahamas. There were two different instances. One was, um, I guess, like they had only recently met and he told me that he passed out face down in the sand while his kids were there and that um, the staff had like whisked his kids away so that they didn't see it. Mr. Tiller, right, when you said that Mr. Depp uh, used the term monster, what do you recall him saying about that? And the language Thank that you. ended up being kind of settled on was that there was a side of him that was the monster and that it was not who he was, but it was something that lived within him that he had to battle. Thank you, soccer and kid. the language that he always used was that of um, battle and battling, battling the demon, battling the monster. Um, so that the monster, you know, he would say things like, the monster will not win. Um, I will not be that type of man, you know, I, I don't want to, I don't want to be that type of man or husband. I don't want to hurt, uh, he would call her slim, he, I, our slim, our girl, referring to all of her friends and him and her and I, yeah. What if any observations did you make of Mr. Depp, both in terms of physical as well as temperament, when you perceived him as having too much to drink? Mr. Depp would drink and or take drugs. He would get very mean, very surly, very uh, paranoid, extremely paranoid. He would weave these elaborate situations in which Amber was having affairs with every man that she ever worked with and every woman she ever came in contact with. Um, <clears throat> he became very demeaning. Johnny is incredibly intelligent, incredibly smart and witty, and he would point his jokes at... Shout out to Slow. People, Thank you, Slow. Um, Amber's appearance, her talent, um, her lack of talent as he perceived it. Um, Thank you. Why he thought that she was actually famous, which he always implied was just because of her looks. Um, and because he thought that everyone wanted to have sex with her. Um, and he would insult his fans. Um, uh -oh. he called them. I remember he called them Remoras, which is a type of... Um, sucker fish that attaches itself to the hull of a ship and puts a hole in it and then sinks it. Um, wow. Would wow. That's intense. Rail against his mother and his sister. Um, sisters. Pretty much, you know, anyone that he felt had crossed him or could cross him, um, he became very nasty about. 
What, if anything, do you recall Mr. Depp saying about uh, his mother and comparing his mother to Amber? Mr. Depp told me that his mom was viciously cruel to him during his upbringing um, and that she was also viciously, like, violent um, with him and with his siblings and with his father. Um, he referred to her, pardon my language, as a bitch. Luke um, Hazley, thank you so much. Whoa, your what? mother? Um, Jesus Christ, cut and twat? And he seemed to Jesus. kind of compare them in the sense that he was, he said at one point, um, something to the effect, it's right here actually. Uh, yeah, I already have a mom who was a bitch to me. I don't need another one in my life. He, there was a fair bit of that kind of like, you know, my mom's been awful enough to me already. I don't need another woman who's gonna also be awful to me. What, if any, discussions did you have with Johnny about the fights he had with Amber? We had a lot of discussions about his fights with Amber. Um, <clears throat> what do you recall? In the very beginning, he expressed that she made him feel crazy, that he was so in love that it made him feel crazy. Um, the very first time that I mentioned, September of 2013, when he and I were alone together a lot, he expressed that he thought that she was cheating on him and sleeping with her co-stars in England on the films. And I said to him, or in the film, and I said to him, listen, you know, I know her, I think, pretty well, and I talk to her a lot, and I think, think if she was having an affair, I would be one of the very few people that she would tell about it, and I don't hold secrets or lies for anybody, and I would, I would tell you if that was happening so you could make your own decisions, but um, as far as I know, that's really not the case, and I think that she's really in love with you, and I think that she also is worried that you are having affairs because both of you are used to being sex symbols on earth and yes, both of you need to just accept the fact that you're really in love with each other and lean in and be together and love each other. Um, and he told me that sometimes his jealousy would make him um, feel crazy and outside himself and that... Uh, he had to get it under control um, and that it would cause them to fight to be specific in regard to your question. Um, <clears throat> he told me about the fight that they had the time that I went up there. Are you asking for specific instances or are you asking about the nature of their fights? No, I, yeah, I am asking for what he told you about their fights and specific instances, yes. So to continue with what I was saying from before, he told me about the fight um, in the middle of the night uh, when I was living down the hill at Sweetser. When I, I mentioned that I saw him with a heavy pour of whiskey, I went outside to the pool and spoke to him. Um, and he told me about the argument that they had had and that she gets mean during fights. Um, and that it really hurts his feelings. <laughs> Tristan is funny. Shout out to Tristan. Her, always leaves funny um, comments. And that, you know, she called him old. And he then calls her soon to be ugly um, and talentless and that they get really ugly with each other. Um, he told me whew, about a fight that they had. Um, we went to England that September, um, it was Whitney's birthday, I think, Amber's sister, Whitney, um, and Amber was stuck working. My birthday, Raquel's birthday, and Whitney's birthday, the three people who she was closest to um, all have birthdays in September. 
it recalls just before the end of August, whatever. We're all Virgos and um, she couldn't be with any of us on our birthday. So we all went to England to surprise her. And during that trip, Johnny proposed to her um, and they then, I'm pretty sure that night after the proposal, got in a huge fight, um, which he all, they both told me about separately. Um, and he said, I'm pretty sure that he trashed the hotel room. Let's see. I spoke to him after, I went and talked to him after their, their fight on the plane. Um, so t t that's the, that's the Boston LA plane incident. Is that right? That's correct. So Mr. Teller, right. Oh. I'm going to ask you about the Boston LA flight. Uh, incident. You talked about it a little bit earlier, and you just said now that you spoke with Mr. Depp about it. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. What do you recall of your discussion with Mr. Depp about the Boston plane incident that happened in May of 2014? And I went upstairs to his bedroom, which was like blocked out. Um, Shout out to Citizen. And I, Thank you. I woke him up. I remember shaking his shoulder and saying to him, hey, buddy, like, wake up, which was not something that a lot of people did to Johnny, wake him from his slumber. Um, and he woke up, and we had a conversation about what happened on the plane. And he didn't really remember being on the plane. He didn't really remember getting off the plane. Um, he didn't really remember much detail of anything, and, I, and he swore up and down that he was going to stop and he was going to stop drinking and taking drugs and he was going to never do it again. That was that incident. What, what if any uh, meetings related to alcohol uh, did you and Amber attend in this time frame? I, I understand because we didn't go to many meetings. Um, Her question for him is so bad. Mm -hmm. I took Amber with me to um, Al-Anon, which is a, it's like a sister program to AA for the family and friends and loved ones of addicts and alcoholics, which I regularly attended. So she came with me to a number of Al-Anon meetings and she also had, um, I think one or two phone calls with my dad's wife about how she dealt with helping him um, get off of his drugs and, and drink less. And um, she read a number of books about it. She was watching documentaries about it. She would listen to any radio show she could get on, like anything, anything she could get her hands on that would give her some tools for how to deal with this, she consumed in that period. What, if any, communications did, did Johnny have with you in this time frame about wanting to get back with Amber after the Boston plane incident? We went to New York, and um, I remember we were staying at the Ace Hotel in Midtown. Um... And Johnny started reaching out to me. He, he went eventually back to Boston to start filming again. Would have been in like the next day or two because we weren't there for that long. <clears throat> and um, he reached out to me and basically said to the, something to the effect of like, you know, I have to fix this. I will do anything that I can. And then uh, while he was in Boston, he let me know. And I think he was trying to reach Amber too, but she didn't. She wasn't ready to talk to him. Um, he let me know that he had um, engaged Dr. Kipper and that he intended with every fiber in his being to get sober. And that the nature of the conversation at that point was that he, he was going to beat this thing. You know? yes, please describe for me what transpired, what, what you discussed with Johnny and Amber relating to Australia in 2015. After they were, because they were married in February and they went to Australia in the spring. Um, if, if, you know, can I, if, I'm going to interrupt you just for a moment and forgive me, I just want to keep it chronologically there. Um, you you described earlier that you were present for the wedding, correct, in February of 2015? Yes. Okay. 
Uh, and you also had discussed uh, about Amber wanting Johnny to be sober for the wedding. What, if any, observations did you make about Johnny uh, at the ceremony and with respect to whether he was sober and clean? You know, I don't actually know whether Johnny was, I don't think Johnny was drinking on the day of their wedding. I really don't actually think. He Let me pause this for a second, guys, because I just ran into two uh, super chats that are back to back. So let me just read these right quick. Shout out to Jamie. Jamie says, let me hit it for Jamie. Jamie says, question, is there a promo code for your YouTube live streaming course? Please and thank you. So thank you so much, uh, Jamie. Jamie is talking about my live streaming course. Guys, I'm just going to be honest with you. Let me just blow it up right quick. It is the best course that exists on live streaming, period, on YouTube. It is the best one. Some of these courses cost $1,000, $1,500, and they are two and three hours long. Guys, check it out. My course is 18 hours long and growing, all right? 18 hours, course, 18, an 18 hour course. Jamie asked for the promo code. And right here, the intentional millionaire, right here is back to back says, TLA, I'm almost finished with your course. 87% through, I'm learning and implementing which takes longer, but worth it. Salute to UTLA. So thank you so much for the $50 spot, uh, Intentional Millionaire. So what I'm going to do to celebrate, uh, to, to, to answer Jamie and to celebrate Camille, I'm going to give five uh, promo codes. It's just going to be five. And there's going to be a discount code. You get $200 off. So the whole thing is like $350 for 18 hours. You will never find a course like this. It's only about live streaming. It's this, what I do, right? And y'all know how much money I make on it. It's it's insane. All right. So the promo code, can anybody guess it? The promo code is Camille. <laughs> so if you want $200 off, there are five codes. So JV, there are five codes, uh, promo codes for uh, the course. It is Camille. All right. Y'all better spell it right. Because if you don't, you're not going to get it. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Jamie. And the other the on the day of their wedding because I was going back and forth between their um, respective like private preparation quarters where they were getting ready because I was technically her best man and his son Jack was his best man, but I wasn't one of the girls and felt more comfortable over there with them but I was helping all the girls. So I was running back and forth on this golf cart between, I was also taking. And let me just say right quick, if you want to see a, pre a, a, a free preview of the course, I have free modules that are available. You can click on the link and it's no obligation and you can take a look at the 18 hours. It's an amazing course. It is the best one in existence. I know I'm biased because I made it, but trust me, just check it out. The link is in the description of this uh, Pictures. I was video. One of two people AV, hold the chat down for a second. Like Mm -hmm. I worked oh, as a photographer, get so some I more coffee. to take pictures. So I was um, very intimately with Johnny and Jack leading up to the wedding, and he wasn't drinking, I don't think. I don't, I don't remember seeing him drink. And then let me ask you this. After the ceremony, as you were walking to the reception, yeah. what, if anything, did Johnny Depp say to you about Amber? As we were walking back from the ceremony... These questions, guys. We were coming into Cafe Los Carrones, which is the, where the party was happening. And I was walking with Johnny and congratulating him that they pulled it off and that they, they did it, you know? And he said, um, What's that? We're married. Now I can punch her in the face and nobody can do anything about it. So I'm going to now turn your direction to Australia roughly a, a month later after the wedding, um, you, were, you weren't present in Australia with uh, Amber and Johnny, correct? That's correct. I'm showing you what has been marked as exhibit number three. Do you recognize anybody in this picture? I do, yeah, myself and Ms. Hurd. I do, yeah. Please describe what you see. Oh, that's him? I see a number of long, thin cuts. And... What, if any, similarity are those uh, to the ones you just described uh, having seen after Amber returned from Australia? Very similar. All right. And, and are they the same? Were they different ones? I would have no way of knowing if they're the same or different ones, but they're 
similarly long skinny cuts like the ones that I saw after she came back from Australia. I'm going to show, Mr. Tellerite, I'm going to show you what has been marked as exhibit number five. Um, and it's a text message exchange. Do you recognize uh, this text message number here below Arrow's Arc? That's my old phone number, yes. Okay, so so is this does this represent a text message exchange between you and Amber Heard on 12-16-2015? Yes, it does. Okay. Let's see the text. I'm start you at the top with the blue. It, it says, I need you. Do you recognize who is sending that message? Yeah. Mr. Tillerette, I'm going to ask you to take a look at what has been marked as exhibit number six. Do you recognize the person in this photo? Yes, I do. Please describe what you see in this picture. I see uh, Amber Heard, and I see an injury to Amber's scalp. I don't see anything, guys. And what, if anything, do you recall about seeing anything similar to that when you arrived? in December 2015 at Amber's Penthouse. I remember this being one of the injuries that I was shown when I arrived at uh, Penthouse 3 at the Eastern Building on December 16th, 2016. And does this picture that's marked as exhibit number six accurately depict the what you recall seeing? I remember this being one of um, I think maybe two scalp injuries that they were. I remember there was another one as well, but I could be mistaken. I believe it's invisible. Part of her head as well. <laughs> Do you recognize uh, the picture that is set forth as uh, exhibit number seven? Yes, I do. Please describe for me what what is depicted in this picture that you recognize. This was a picture of Amber's scalp. And does it accurate? Does this accurately uh, depict what you saw uh, when you were shown it, uh, as you testified earlier in December two thousand fifteen? Yes, it does. Mr. Tillerite, I'm going to show you what has been marked as Deposition Exhibit Number Eight. Uh, oh, do you it's recognize back. this picture? Here's yes. that picture. Please describe um, what is depicted there. This is Amber Heard's face. Um, with a very swollen lip. Uh, and does this uh, accurately depict what you observed when you arrived at Amber Heard's penthouse in December 2015? Yes. I'm going to show you what has been marked as deposition exhibit number nine. Do you recognize this picture? Yes, I do. Please These describe. are the same pictures they've this used. Is the clump of hair that I was shown, I believe. When I arrived at Penthouse 3 on the night of December 16th, 2015. And does this accurately and genuinely depict the scene that you recall seeing? Yes, it does. Thank you. Now, did what, what if any, plans was there at, as of December 16, 17 of 2015? for uh, Amber to be uh, spending Christmas with Mr. Depp and his kids. Do you recall? Getting the pictures down while we talk. Yes, I do recall. Um, there was a plan for um, Johnny and Amber and Lily Rose and Jack and uh, Raquel and her boyfriend or fiance at the time, Josh, um, to go to the Bahamas. Oh, and Raquel's mom and Amber's parents to go to the Bahamas and spend Christmas on the island together. Um, yeah. I don't know why they're offering Mr. this. Tillerite, I'm going to ask you, what if any conversations did you have with Johnny Depp about the December 15 incident? I don't think that he and I, I don't know that he and I had a direct conversation about it. I'm not sure if he and I had a direct. So what if any, 
I'm going to show you, Mr. Tiller, right The jacket what came off. This is an exhibit number 16. It's a text message exchange dated 2-10-2016. Do you recognize this document? Yes, I do. It's a text exchange between me and Amber Heard about a video that she sent me. Okay. Now, it starts out, hi, uh, Steve left me a voicemail at 5 a.m. Uh, and that's from you, correct? That's correct. Do you remember what the voicemail message was? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Johnny called me at five in the morning and left me a voicemail in the character of um, some kind of management of like a property manager. Um, and he said something about, yes, hello, this is management. And um, I don't remember what he said, but it was something to do with like, we have a situation that we need to change out the something. And it was just a lengthy, just off the wall, nutbag ramble in the character of management. Mr. Tillerite, I'm going to show you what has been marked as exhibit number 17. And then Alex, I'm going to ask you to play this. I think you're on mute. Lee, you gotta unmute yourself. <laughs> Shout out unmute to the Godfather. Yourself, right? Shout out to the Godfather. <laughs> I had to pause that because TMZ actually owns that. Y'all know that's the video of him beating up the uh the cabinets, right? And so if I show that video like I did yesterday, they will demonetize the video. But hopefully y'all saw it. It's on the video. No, I had to take it out of the video. Can you talk? And so I called and so let me just stop it. I was walking Wait. down the street as this happened. Um, the video is supposed to show Johnny Depp, you know, slamming cabinets. He was very upset. Amber was recording him without his knowledge. He had just lost his mother the night before, the day before, and he was slamming cabinets and Amber was recording him. That is what the recording is of. Uh, Amber sold the right to that recording to TMZ. And so if you show that recording on YouTube, then TMZ is going to claim your, your video. So that's why I skipped it. She put me on speakerphone. So I was talking to both of them. He just stopped by to pick up some of his stuff. <clears throat> and he has a theory that he, um, either he wants to ask you about or I, and I said, okay, sure. And hello, Johnny. Like, and he, I think it was he said or she said, um, Johnny thinks that you and I together defecated on his pillow. Oh, the bed. Used word, used word. The poop in the bed. Um, Yes, and do you notice they didn't bring Camille didn't so talk about the poop. Started laughing. She didn't. At Camille all. did not. She did not talk about laughing, the poop. She was laughing, and, and when I realized that he was serious, I was like, "Okay, look, you know, first of all, I wasn't there that day, and, and so he got very agitated by the fact that she and I thought it was funny, and he started to get." Um, more and more agitated and I could hear him walk away from the phone. He came clomping back down the stairs. I heard like a noise and then the phone dropped and um, he said to her, oh, you think I hit you? You think I fucking hit you? What if I peel your fucking hair back? Jesus. And then I heard the phone drop again, and then I heard her scream. I remember her screaming. And I hung up the phone, and I called Raquel immediately because I know that she lives one door away and would 
her and her boyfriend, Josh, who's a big dude, would be able to get there the fastest. And um, I, I called her, texted her right away, and I hung up with her and immediately called my Thank you, Twan. Thank you. In New York. And then I called <clears throat> a friend of mine in L.A. who I knew had met Amber a number of times. And Is he crying? I think... Mm -hmm. I may have placed a second call to NYPD. Now I'm all frazzled and I don't remember, but I think I called NYPD. Mr. Waldman made some statements in April and June of 2020 that that both well, Amber Heard and her friends in the media used fake sexual violence allegations as both a sword and shield depending on their needs. They've selected some of her sexual violence hoax facts as the sword, inflicting them on the public and Mr. Depp. That was made on April 8, 2020. What about impact about did that have on Amber based on your observations? Amber retreated. Amber became... <sighs> isolated, um, embattled, extraordinarily uh, distressed. And then on June 24, 2020, Waldman accused Amber Heard of committing a quote, abuse hoax against Depp. What were your observations of how this impacted him? I think that my previous statement encompassed that. During the time that you were friends with Johnny and you were speaking with him up until you, test, you testified December of 2015. What, if anything, did Johnny exactly. Depp ever tell you about Amber Heard being physically violent to him? Nothing ever at any point. Do you agree with me that uh, Mr. Depp and Ms. Heard uh, had many verbal arguments? Yes, I do. And you were a witness to a lot of those verbal arguments, correct? I was a witness to some verbal arguments. Okay. And did you ever hear Ms. Hurd say anything mean to Mr. Depp in those arguments? What are you guys rating yes. uh, Camille? And Don't rate Amber. Ms. Rate Hurd Camille. Anything Fresh out of the shower. To Mr. Depp in those arguments? Yes. So would you agree with me that when they argued, they were mean and vicious to one another in what they said? I would categorize it very differently, sir. Well, you testified that you heard Ms. Heard say mean and vicious things to Mr. Depp when they argued and vice versa. Is that accurate? Yes. Most people are saying an eight and I'm agree. I'm gonna agree. Shout out to the eights. And you can't use seven. Witness, nope. So it's either, it's either eight or six. Between the two of them where they exchanged mean and vicious statements. No sevens. You never saw Mr. Depp assault or beat Ms. Heard on any occasion. Correct? Shout out to Kevin. Objection. No, I never saw either of them physically assault the other ones. Did you ever experience him become violent as a result of or because of smoking cigarettes or joints? As I've already explained to you probably eight times, I've never seen Mr. Depp become physically violent with Ms. Heard. So if that's what you're asking me, if he smoked a cigarette and that made him violent, I think you know that that's ridiculous. And the answer is, again, no. Did you ever witness... He's getting crunk. Jeff mm -hmm. become violent in any manner uh, on account of him smoking cigarettes or joints? If you want my honest answer, my honest answer is that Mr. Depp mixed substances constantly. And I keep trying to tell you that. He mixed all kinds of things together when he got crazy and violent. So, and upset and paranoid. So, and I never knew what he had taken. When you say, when you say when he got violent, when did you see him get violent? I saw, I saw Mr. Depp throw glasses and dishware on at least two occasions, which I would characterize as physically violent. And do I know if he'd smoked marijuana or cigarettes before that? I don't know. When were those two occasions? Sometime during the time that I was living in Sweetser. And, and one sets at Eastern Building. And prior to throwing those.
Let me just pause it right here. Shout out to Jamie A as well as Michael B. Shout out to Jamie A and Michael B. They have purchased the course. So I think there are three courses remaining. There's only five with a discount code. And the discount course, the discount code, of course, is Camille. So there are three codes left. If you just want to take a preview of the course, just look at it. Just hit the hit the link below in the description. No obligation. Thank you so much to Jamie A. and Michael B. Thank did you so much. Did you witness him um, imbibing any drugs or alcohol? I couldn't tell you, but seeing as Mr. Depp always was smoking cigarettes and marijuana, my assumption would be yes. Okay. Do you recall um, when Ms. Bredenhoff showed you a picture of a clump of hair on the floor? Yes. Okay. When you saw that, that was more than a day after uh, <laughs> it was allegedly pulled from her head by Mr. Depp. I right? love you guys so much. Well, yeah. This is the best job in the world. My understanding was that their fight happened uh, very late at night. Uh, Shout out to P. White. Which is technically the morning of the 16th. And I arrived at her house around midnight, the night of the 16th. So technically, it's not more than a day after. It's in the same 24-hour period. So technically, the answer to your question is no. Okay. So I'm just talking about the hair on the ground that you saw. When you saw it, was it your understanding that it had been there for more than 20 hours? I have no idea what time their fight started or ended. So I don't know if it was 20 hours or 16 hours or 13 hours. But... My understanding, again, was that they had gotten into a fight sometime in the morning of the 16th slash late at night on the 15th. I don't know at what point during the, which that during that fight in which the clump of hair was ripped out of her head. But it happened sometime then and there. So, yeah, sure. The hair my, on my the carpet from a smooth that cat. clump of hair had not been moved since it was ripped out of her head. All right. All right. Complete. All right. Do you, what's your next, who's your next witness? We, we have another uh, video deposition, Raquel Pennington. It, it's a long one, so we could listen to some of it. All right, let's probably go ahead and start. Okay. Probably go ahead and start it today. At least get 30 minutes in. We could. That's okay. fine. Yeah. All right. And Your Honor, just for your benefit, the jury's benefit, the questioning starts with Ms. Vasquez on behalf of Mr. Depp, and then I question Ms. Pennington at some point, which will probably be tomorrow. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right, we get to see Ms. Vasquez again, the hot tamale train. Mm -hmm. For the record, Raquel, mm -hmm. uh, in what city and state do you currently reside? Los Angeles, California. You've been deposed before, right? Yes. And you were deposed in Ms. Hurd's divorce proceeding for Mr. Depp. Is that correct? Yes. We you got more smooth cat divorce? action, guys. No. What was the purpose of the declaration that you submitted during Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd's divorce? The purpose of the thing that I wrote, which I don't know if it was technically called a declaration or whatever it was, it was to write down my account of events as fresh in my memory as possible. And Ms. Hurd asked you to, to write down your witness account. Is that correct? I, I do not remember, actually. I think, did, I don't know. Did Mr. Depp ask you to write down anything in support of any legal filings? I, I, I don't remember. So it's your testimony sitting here today that you don't remember one way or another, whether it was Mr. Depp or Ms. Ms. Hurd that asked you to write down your witness account during their divorce. Is that correct? Um, 
I wrote down my account. That is the memory that I have. I wrote down everything as clearly as I could remember it as soon as I could. You provided a witness statement in the UK proceedings. Is that correct? I believe so. Do you recall how many witness statements you provided? Just one. And you provided this witness statement to the son's attorneys? I don't know who it got provided God to. God damn, 700. Yeah, did you testify in the UK trial? Jesus Christ. Um, yes. 700. And for Jesus. which party did you testify for in the UK trial? I believe it was the um, publication. Oh, crime is lit, huh? I've never seen that before in my life. By the publication, you mean the sun? <laughs> yes. When was the last time you spoke to Ms. Heard? Perhaps six months ago, maybe more. What did you and Ms. Heard speak about? Oh, but this shit is good though. Law and crime. Y'all were looking law and crime. This shit is good. It was before they her got baby three cameras. was born. So we were mostly speaking about her baby at that point. Did you speak to, That's good. when was the last time you spoke to Miss Whitney Bird? Um, Shout out to Lemonade. Thank you so much. Around uh, November, October, November of last year. And when you say last year, you mean 2021? Yes. When did you first meet Ms. Amber Heard? Um, I believe it was 2003. When you met Ms. Heard in 2003, you developed a friendship. Is that right? Shout out to Terry. Yes. Thank you so much, Terry. Would you say you were best friends? Um, we became very close friends. Your friendship with Ms. Heard, it persisted through her relationship with Mr. Depp. Is that correct? Yes. And you were friends with Ms. Heard through her divorce from Mr. Depp as well. Is that correct? Yes. Other than when you lived at the Eastern Columbia building, which we'll get to, did you ever live with Ms. Heard? Yes. Oh my God, they were fucking. When was it? <laughs> you know it. Look at her. 2017? 2017 to 2018? Yeah. Where did you both live? Also, let me pause it right here. Let me give a quick shout out to Jacqueline H. Jacqueline H has purchased the course as well. Thank you so much, Jacqueline H. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. So there are two more codes available for this 18 hour course. This is not a two hour course that's a thousand dollars or a four hour course that's $1,500. This is an 18 hour course that's only like 350 if you use the coupon code, it's a big discount. So shout out to Jacqueline H as well as Jamie A and Michael B. Thank you guys so much. It is the best course, hands down by far on live streaming that exists. It is the best course. So thank you so much, guys. Let's keep it going. On Holly Drive. And thank you, Jessica. God, let me hit it for Jessica. Thank you. Is that a home? The, the ice cat. Yes. And did you pay rent? Jessica is. Um. Hispanic no. and white, Jesus. It Ms. Heard? They don't get no smoother than that. Yes. Hispanic and today, white. Still consider Ms. Heard a friend. Jessica got um, that Camille action going on. I wouldn't consider her not a friend. What does that mean? We don't speak. We are not enemies. 
They definitely. Why don't you speak? Um, we grew apart. Shonda, can I put my question read back? Yes. That's a nice office. Yeah, that view's sick. Sitting here today, you can't give me one reason why you grew apart from Ms. Hurd. I wanted to spend more time with other people in my life and prioritize other relationships and other yeah, other relationships. Over the course of your friendship with Amber Heard, did you ever see her using illicit drugs? Can you define illicit drugs? Not prescribed. Um, yes. Did you ever see her use cocaine? Mm. Yes. How many times? I don't know. Countless? No. Less than 10? Yes. Less than five? Yes. If you remember, when was the first time you ever saw Amber Heard use cocaine? I, I don't remember. Yeah, this witness isn't giving anything up. She is, and you know they fall. Did you ever do cocaine with Ms. Heard? <laughs> Amber Heard? Um, yes. How often? She is fighting the whole way. Uh, not often. Was there a point in your relationship with Ms. Amber using more cocaine? Uh, no. AV, if they ever depose you, you for my trial, I want you to be just like this. Just be silent. <laughs> don't, don't tell them nothing, AV. Don't tell like, them I don't nothing. remember it. I don't remember anything. Exactly. Did you see Lee losing cocaine? I don't know if it was cocaine nope. or not. <laughs> I don't I know. know. I'm not a forensic scientist. <laughs> Shout out to baby AV. I think so. <laughs> you know what provisional is? Yes. Are you aware that Ms. Amber Heard has taken a drug called provigil? Yes. Do you know when she started taking it? Uh, no. Do you know whether Amber Heard continued to take provisional during her relationship with Mr. Depp? Mm, no. Who do you guys prefer, the witness or Amber? Did she tell you that she had stopped taking provisional? The witness or Amber, who, who y'all got? She never told me that one. Are you familiar with any of the side effects of provisional? No. Did Ms. Hurd ever tell you that she was experiencing any side effects as a result of provisional? Oh, y'all loving the witness. Oh, well, there's a she few never Ambers. Said anything. There's a few AVs. Y'all slow down. Okay. Slow down. You testified you saw Ms. Hurd use mushrooms less than five times. Yes? Okay, we'll throw yes. AV in there too. AV, Amber, or the witness? What do y'all got? AV, Amber, or the witness? Did you say each of the five times? Right. Not each. Or of Camille. The five times. AV, Amber, the witness, or Camille? Amber Let's just a fucking free for all. In a relationship with Mr. Depp. Maybe three. AV is fucking killing it. Oh, uh, she's killing it. A few Camille's. Do you recall the specific occasions when you saw Amber Heard use mushrooms while she was in a relationship with Mr. Depp? Um, the first Coachella that we went to, the second Coachella that we went to. It's A.V., Camille, The Witness, and Amber. <laughs> and... What 
the lineup. <laughs> um, maybe at Hicksville. <laughs> was Mr. Death at Hicksville? Oh my god. Yes. That was a great but one. June moved <laughs> into one of the penthouses in the Eastern Columbia building. Is that correct? <laughs> I don't Greg says, see, that's why we choose an AV. <laughs> that is why we choose an AV. Approximately in 2014. Um. <laughs> the light up. That's a great one. Uh, approximately. And Ms. Heard at the time was in a relationship with Mr. Depp, correct? Yes. And it was Mr. Depp who invited you to live in one of the penthouses, right? Uh, they both did. When you say they both did, they both sit you down and invite you to live in the penthouses? I don't remember how the invitation happened, but it came from both of them. This was a penthouse Mr. Depp owned, right? Correct. And specifically, the one you lived in, it was referred to as Penthouse One, right? Correct. And when you moved in, Mr. Depp gave you a master key to all the penthouses he owned, right? He could have been um, one of his assistants. When you say one of his assistants, you mean Mr. one of Mr. Depp's assistants? Correct. So one, either Mr. Depp or one of his assistants gave you a master key to all the penthouses that he owned, correct? Mm, yes. Mr. Depp never charged Mr. Group for rent while he lived at Penthouse One, did he? He did not charge uh, him any rent. No. Did either of you get physical? No. And how was this argument resolved? We talked it out. Fuck. You recalled another argument with Ms. Heard at Holly House, is that correct? Mm hmm What was this argument about? I think that we were setting up for Thanksgiving and um, we were looking for uh, maybe some glasses or some dishware. We had just moved in and we couldn't find them anywhere. And then um, she finally found them in a place that I thought I had looked and uh, we started arguing about that. She thought that I wasn't uh, looking hard enough, I think, and I told her that I thought that I looked there. <laughs> yeah, I think that's what their argument was about. Um, was this just a verbal altercation or did you get physical with each other? Um, you threw blows. Yeah, I believe that we, I believe that I pushed her. How did Ms. Amber Heard react to that? She, she either pushed or hit me back. Camille's got to dig it out. Come on. <laughs> you know, what is, what is she hiding? Hit you? I think it was on my cheek. Do you recall any other physical altercations that you've had with Ms. Amber Heard? Uh, no. Do you recall any specific instances when you saw Amber Heard get into a fight with someone else? Uh, no. In the time you've known Amber Heard, have you ever seen her wear hair extensions? The front lace. Um, <laughs> yeah, yes. 
Did she have hair extensions in while she was in a relationship with Mr. Depp? I, I, I don't know when exactly she had them throughout the time of knowing her. I'm going to mark Ms. Pennington Exhibit 1, Ms. Pennington's witness statement in the UK proceeding, which is dated June 16th, 2020. Ms. Pennington, first and foremost, do you recognize this document? Yes. Ms. Pennington, this is a sworn witness statement that you, you provided okay. in the UK, right? I understand. I wanted to get to the bottom and make sure that this was the one that I signed and saw the date, and that was the full document. I just finished it. Yes, this is the document. Did you write this witness statement yourself? Yes. I'm sorry, I didn't catch that. Yes. Thank you. Did anyone help you write this? Um, no. Did Amber Heard help you write this? No. Did Amber Heard's counsel help you write this? No. Other than your attorney, did you speak with anyone about the preparation of this witness statement? No. Could please turn to the 10th page of the document where your signature is or a signature is? Is that your signature on the 10th page of this document, Ms. Pennington? That is my e-signature, yes. Are all the statements in this document true to the best of your knowledge and recollection? Yes. You previously testified that you went on a trip to Hicksville with uh, Ms. Hurd, Mr. Hicksville. Depp, and some other friends. Is that correct? Yes. Do you recall when this trip occurred? not off the top of my head. Do you recall who else went on that trip? Yes. Who else was on that trip? Um, Whitney Heard. Nathan, who was um, one of Johnny's assistants. Um, Brittany Eustace. There are no more class, no Kelly more codes, guys. Milano. I gave two more, so there were seven in total. Shout out to everybody who bought our course. I have put y'all in the banner. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. I'm trying to remember. Shout out to Nacho Nabo. I love that name. No, I I don't remember anybody else. Thank you, Nacho Nabo. Where were you all staying? At Hicksville Trailer Park. Did you personally witness Mr. Depp become, quote, angry and aggressive, end quote, toward a friend of yours? <laughs> yes. Relative to where Mr. Depp was, where were you when this occurred? Um, we were around a campfire. My question is a bit more specific. Relative to where Mr. Depp was when this occurred, where were you sitting or standing? I was at the same campfire. How close were you to Mr. Depp? Uh, I don't six to 10 feet. What time of day did this occur? Evening. Have you consumed any drugs or alcohol at this time? I think so. What do you recall? She's good. <laughs> Um, 
I don't remember likely wine. I don't remember specifically. Do you smoke any weed? No. Did you consume any cocaine? No. Have you consumed any mushrooms? Mm, let me think. <laughs> uh, I believe so. Also, let me stop it here, right, just for a second. Um, thank you to everybody who bought a course. I added two more, so those was, those were snapped up. Everybody's emailing me, so I've just put I've just made a new coupon code. Everybody who bought a course, I put you in the banner. So thank you guys so much. The new coupon code is Camille One, the number one Camille number one. I've offered I've opened up a few more. It's Camille number one. But thank you to everybody. It is the best course, hands down. Eighteen hours doesn't cost you three thousand dollars, right? Uh, excellent course. Use this coupon code Camille number one. Thank you guys so much. Have you consumed any MDMA? I'll add you to the no. banner if you buy one as well. Thank you. Who was a friend that you referenced Mr. Depp became, quote, angry and aggressive towards? Um, Kelly. Kelly Sue. How did you know her? She was um, married to a work friend of mine. Do you have any independent recollection of how long you had known Kelly Sue Milano by the time Hicksville occurred? More than one year, less than two. What did you witness Kelly Sue Milano doing that evening before Mr. Depp became, quote, angry and aggressive? I witnessed her hang out with the rest of the group. Did you see her consume any alcohol? Um, not that I remember. Do you see her smoke any weed? No. Consume cocaine? No. Did you see her consume any mushrooms? Um, maybe one. So we're, I'm 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 genuinely trying to remember. I saw I saw her eat some amount. I don't know how much. Did you see her consume any MDMA? No. You testified that Mr. Depp said words to the effect of, quote, get off my woman, end quote, to your friend. Is that right? I testified that. Did you personally hear Mr. Depp say that? Yes. Is this the Thank quote, you, angry and aggressive, end quote, conduct by Mr. Depp that you testified to? Yes. Other than telling Kelly Sue Milano, Thank you, quote, Jamie. get off his woman, end quote, what did you personally observe Mr. Depp do that was, quote, angry and aggressive, end quote? That was, that was what happened. Then I think Amber, I think they were, Kelly and Amber were hugging on a chair out by the fire. He came out of nowhere, said that. And then I think that Amber and Johnny went back to the, um, to their trailer. Other than hearing Mr. Depp say something to the effect of get off my woman. <laughs> Shout out to Al. What did you personally observe Mr. Depp do that was quote angry and aggressive? That's it. Did you hear Amber say anything to Mr. Depp? I don't remember her saying anything. Shout out to Janaki. Did you Thank hear you Amber so much. Did you hear Amber's voice and speaking to Mr. Depp? No. What, if anything, do you remember about Amber's reaction to Mr. Depp's behavior? She 
she was trying to comfort him. This evening in Hicksville, did you ever see Amber Heard consume any drugs or alcohol? Mm. I didn't see it. You didn't see Ms. Heard drink any wine? Yeah, I don't, I don't remember a specific time watching her take a sip of a drink. Was she holding a drink? I don't remember. And this evening in Hicksville, did you see Mr. Dobb consume any drugs or alcohol? I, I didn't see any specific image in my mind of him consume. Did you personally witness Mr. Depp, quote, in a rage, end quote, that Ms. Heard described? Did I personally witness the rage in the trailer? Yes. No. Shout out to everybody on Rumble. Thank you guys for watching me on Rumble. Did you hear Mr. Depp yelling in the trailer? No. Did you hear Ms. Heard yelling in the trailer? No. Did you personally see that the trailer was, quote, trashed, as Ms. Heard described? The next morning? Yes. Yes. Thank you again, Janaki Richardson. Thank you. No comment, no question, just pure love. What Thank you, What specifically did you see in the trailer? Mm. The thing I remember specifically was the light fixtures had been knocked off. But you didn't see Mr. Depp knock off the light fixtures in the trailer, is that correct? I did not see it. So the only thing you know about what happened in that trailer is what Ms. Heard told you and your observations of the light fixtures being knocked off, is that correct? The only thing I know about what happened in the trailer is what she told me and what I saw the next morning. Thank and you, the only G3357. thing you saw the next morning was that the light fixtures had been knocked off, is that correct? That was not the only thing I saw. It is the specific thing I saw. What else do you recall about the trailer? Thank you, G37. It was in a general disarray. Thank you, Dom K. What does that mean? It was trash. It was torn apart. What besides the light fixtures were thrown apart? I've already told you specifically, I remember the light fixtures. The rest is a general disarray. What is a general disarray to you, Ms. Huntington? Stuff off the counters, uh, cushions thrown around, things strewn about on the floor. Did you see Ms. Heard shortly after she returned from Australia? All right. Why don't we just stop yes. right there? So that'd be a good breaking point, I think. Okay. 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 Perfect. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and break for the evening. Again, do not discuss uh, uh, this case with anybody and don't do any outside research. And we'll see you in the morning at nine o'clock. All right. Get some sleep. Okay. <laughs> yes, mom. Get some sleep. Judge, if you want to shut your ass up. All right, guys, listen, this was an entertaining day. We saw Camille earn her stripes. We saw Camille earn her, her stripes today. She eviscerated grandma. Had grandma just like, well, I guess I'm I'm guess I'm out of questions. A few items. I just just for the record, I want to make sure exhibit uh plaintiff one two four eight from yesterday. Actually should be corrected in the record to plaintiff's one two four eight a is that correct that's correct your honor thank okay, you okay good all right and so the witnesses tomorrow are they live remote or do we need a we have web one link? one live witness tomorrow the rest are all video depositions so they're all depositions so we don't need a webex link no okay no. all right other than that jury instructions and verdict forms uh i have received jury instructions from both parties thank you for that however i have not received agreed upon jury instructions as requested um, so I'm not sure if that has happened or not happened as far as getting an agreed. Your Honor, we have been trying to meet and confer with them for a week. Well, you know, I, Your Honor, well. they're identified and emailed to Sammy. Okay, so the ones that you agreed upon? Yes. Okay, that's fine. So if you could do the same, just give me the, which ones you sure. agree upon. Sure. I'd appreciate that. 
Um, if we can get uh, also by Thursday your objections to the ones that you don't agree upon in writing to me by Thursday morning, okay? Yes, can we Can we get that just so I know what you're objecting to? Because I only have two hours on Friday morning from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. To, to, to deal with this issue. So I want to make sure we're all prepared to get that done at that time frame, okay? Understood, Your Honor. All right, yes. great. Anything? Your Honor, I, I just want to make clear, we, we haven't seen... What they sent until they sent today. So okay, that's that's fine. To confer about this for a week, and I don't. I'm not interested no in anybody's yeah. finger pointing, but I understand. But we'll just go forward from here, and if I can get them Thursday morning, that'd be fantastic. Okay. Understood. All right. Thank great. You, All right. Have a good evening, and we'll see you in the morning. All right, guys. All right. This was a great day. This is an awesome fucking day, man. We had Camille just blasting Grandma. We had Camille uh, doing pretty well on cross. She did excellent on cross yesterday. Uh, today, you know, she um, there's Johnny saluting everybody. There is Johnny, All right? Shout out to Johnny Depp. All right, guys. Shout out. Well, let's hit it one more time for Johnny Depp. Hit it. Whoa, let's, let's take a look, quick look. We got Camille standing in the sunlight. Y'all see Camille right there. Boy, somebody going to take Camille out for a steak dinner. She killed it. She absolutely killed it. Look at her glad hand and kissing, kissing baby, shaking hands. She's going to be a politician. Listen, Camille's got her whole career ahead of her. She did fantastic. All right, from, from one lawyer to a, a about to be a, a newly minted lawyer. Wait, look at, uh, is this the olive cover skin? This is the olive skin girl that y'all were talking about in this uh, mm -hmm. camel yes, coat right here. Uh, I, <laughs> <laughs> I got Camille all day. Shout, look at her, guys. You know, now give it up for Amber, man. Amber was fighting every single way on that stand. She did not give up anything. She did not admit to anything, did not admit to any violence, did not admit to any touching, any assault, any battery, any unconsented, anything, you know. Oh, I was, I was, I slapped him because I had to defend myself. That was, that was the play that she was running 100% of the time. All right. Now, who do we have up here? We have A.V. A.V., introduce yourself really quickly for those who do not know who you are. Hi, everybody. My name is A.V. I am a third year law student. I'm literally looking at the finish line, about to finish law school, sitting for the bar exam soon. Uh, super active in the community, learning a lot about these trials, especially this trial uh, for the past few days. So it's been really interesting to watch. So thank you, Lead, for having me as always and providing the awesome commentary. No problem. Yes, this has been super interesting. Y'all saw Camille just go in there blasting grandma and then everybody congratulating her. Now, I'll be honest with you, if if Camille was 50 years old, you know, no one would have been no one would have been, you know, hugging her like that because it just would have been automatic. You know, this is what she does. But Camille's relatively young and this is a humongous case. And so when you have a big case and you're relatively young, as you come up through the ranks, you know, this is what it looks like. So we can all see AV in a year or two, maybe, you know, I know she's going to do more transactional law, but maybe she finds herself in a courtroom and she's blasting some grandma in, 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 in Massachusetts and everybody's giving AV the hug. So AV, you know, what did you think about, what, what are some of your thoughts about some of the, the things that we've talked, well, we've heard today? with yeah. Camille, with uh, Amber, uh, kind of, kind of what's your take on it? Yeah, no, I think Granny Vengeance. Wait, let me just, Jesus Christ, hold on guys, sorry about that. Struggle screaming. All right, uh, they cut the feed on the, uh, on the court. All right, so talk to us again, kind of what were your, what yeah, were yeah, some yeah. Of your... Some of the things so that I you think um, it started with Granny Vengeance, right? So you saw, <laughs> you saw Camille kind of dig into her, and she wasn't letting her grow, letting her go. And I think that's really where you have control over your witness, right? You don't mm -hmm. want to lose control over your witness. I think in the very last, um, uh, in the last deposition that we were just watching, that is not having control over the witness. If you look at how the day started with Camille and how she was controlling Amber in a way, like she's like, no, 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 we're going here. 
no, we're going back here. She did do it fast. So to your point, definitely needed to slow down for proper jury um, impact. But, yeah. you know, for Granny, it's just like, come on, where's where's your rules of evidence? Like, exactly. you know, it's, it's, it's just you know, she couldn't like properly land a question when she tried to come back for redirect. And it's just like, you know, she kept getting frustrated. But I'm like, come on, you always start your sentences with what, if any, what happened to that? Stick to that. At least Correct. try to get the question out right, you know? Exactly, so. exactly. And this judge was not giving her any slack whatsoever. Now I pulled up, y'all know who this is. Pulled up a picture of our bay, you know, shout out to Jamaica. <laughs> shout out to all the Rastafarians. We got Rihanna in the house, right? Shout out to Rihanna. And, you know, this is what a real domestic violent, uh, violence uh, victim looks like. We'll just call her a victim uh, because look at her face, right? And you saw the guy testify today in a deposition saying, you know, that he saw something on, on, on Amber's temple. You know, but no one else saw it. I didn't see anything. AV, I think you mentioned that you didn't see anything. But, you know, everybody sees this. Everybody knows that this is some real domestic violence right here. In fact, if you look at her background, it looks like she's in the hospital. She's in some medical center, some medical facility receiving uh, some type of, of medical care. Something that Amber Heard never did. Amber Heard never did. Right. Um, so shout out to 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 uh, real. I don't want to say shout out to real domestic violence uh, survivors, but, you know, you got to call the real from the fake. Let me hit it one time for Mr. Mustachio said this mofo be looking like Nigel Thorberry. That is what <laughs> that is what it is. <laughs> if you know, you know, smashing. Now, you know, Nigel. I don't know who Nigel is. Who do you who is it's Nigel? from the wild Thornberries? It was like a cartoon. Uh, in the 90s on Nickelodeon. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. Listen, uh, thank you so much, Mr. Mustachio. Mr. Mustachio, man, I, I, I got you. I don't want to, I don't want to dox you or anything, but just thank you so much for always helping your boy out. He sponsored the stream yesterday, and has probably sponsored this stream too. I haven't gone back to add it up, but you know everything that you have done, Mr. Mustachio. I cannot tell you how grateful I am. And I know I've probably missed a couple of your super chats. This has been a crazy stream, guys. I usually don't miss super chats like this, but everything's going so fast and uh, everything is on the fly. So, you know, Camille was up there trying to tap dance. Lord knows grandma was up there tap dancing, you know, horribly. And to be honest, the lead has been up here in this stream kind of tap dancing and going with the flow, calling some audibles here and there as well. So I haven't been able to get all of the super chats, but one person I do want to... Um, uh, send a huge shout out to you, of course, is Mr. Mustachio. Been supporting your boy so, so thorough. So thank you so much, Mr. Mustachio. I cannot tell you how how grateful I am. All right. Um, AV, it seems like for tomorrow, they're going to have another live witness and another, uh, another, um, another deposition. Word on the street is that they're going to call Johnny back. So Johnny is going to testify again, you know, and, you know, it might be grandma. How, how, how would you how would you classify maybe grandma trying to cross examine uh, a Johnny with with Camille sitting right there? How do you think that's going to go? That would be tough. Johnny would have fun with that. He'd probably be like the last witness we just saw. You know, I think the last time Johnny was on the stand, he had the attorney um, object to his own question <laughs> right so it's <laughs> it's one of those things where it could it could be epic but if you also have um if you also have camille kind of just kind of guarding it right i think it'll be fine um uh, grandma's probably not gonna get a question out um and get frustrated and stop right so um that's gonna be interesting but i wonder what they're gonna try to um get out of him as far as uncovering more pieces of evidence uncovering more information um from their side right because last time johnny was up it's when it was his side of the case, so the plaintiff's side. So let's see what the defense puts up with him. Absolutely. If you were a juror in this case, you know who are you leaning towards? Now let's yes. let's, let's, let's yeah. It's like it's kind of clear, right? Yeah. Is, is there yeah. anybody in the chat that is rooting for uh, Amber? There were, you know, there was a few people every now and then, but it looks like we are kind of wholly on the side of our man Johnny Johnny Depp. Uh, let me pull up a few more super chats and thank you again so, so much, Mr. Mus uh, Mustachio. I cannot tell you 
uh, how much your support means to me. It's amazing. And, you know, shout out to shout out to AV right here. She is thinking of starting her own YouTube channel. So it is great that you guys are showing her uh, the support that is available. Being a soup, being a YouTuber is tough. Um, it requires thick skin because so many people talk shit, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Now, you, you know, it's hard to, it's hard to, 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 to criticize that too much because as a YouTuber, you're putting yourself into the public eye, right? right. Um, if, if you don't want anybody to talk mess about you, then, you know, you don't have to be on YouTube. So we all turn on the camera and open ourselves up for the BS. But at the same time, when the BS comes, you're like, ugh. You know, and all the support that you guys show is just amazing. Thank you so much, Smile Face. Thank you so much, Derek Jones. Really appreciate that. Thank you for becoming a member. And thank you again, Mr. Mustachio. Now, you mentioned you are in your third year of law school, AV. You know, what do you have mm -hmm. left? Kind of what's your, what's your schedule look like? Yeah, I have my last final tomorrow and then... She's got a um, final tomorrow, guys, but she said no YouTube today. Listen, <laughs> <laughs> this is how you support, right? It's, and this is it's how an these, easier class. It's an easier yeah. class. <laughs> this is how these third years are, too. And the third, what do they say? They say for law, law school guys, it's three years. So they say in the first year, they scare you to death. The second year, they uh, work you to death. And then the third year, they bore you to death, right? So, you know, our, our girl, A.V., she has a final tomorrow, and she's chilling with us. She's like, man, I got the damn thing in the back. Go on, go on and give me my degree. Go on and give me my degree. Shout out to Smile Faces. I'm about to pick up a drinking habit due to Elaine's what if okay. any questions. Yes, she was exactly right. She was trying to throw that what if to get around some of the objections, but they were not working today. Shout out to Black Mod Money and Muscle. Here's what I'll do, guys. I'm gonna drop the link. If you guys want to come up, I'm gonna get about two or three people. Let me get, let me pull up about two or three people. If you want to come up, ask me any questions. Ask AV, a law student. If you have any questions about law school or have any questions about the legal field or this case or any other case, come on up. I have dropped the link. You guys are welcome up now because of all the trolls. Thank you so much, uh, Julio. Says I thought the prime coat was slime. <laughs> Shout out to uh, YSL, Young Slime Life. Those brothers need Camille for real. They are in trouble with the Rico. Um, shout out to Julio. Thank you so much. If anyone wants to hit the link and come up, you certainly can while I get a few more of these super chats. We are going to be doing this tomorrow as well. Uh, the There's speculation on who the live witness is. Some people think it's going to be Amber Heard's sister. Although, you know, her sister might be disqualified for uh, violating a court rule. And then some people think it's going to be Am one of Amber Heard's best friends. And then uh, we'll, we got the deposition testimony. And then we will see after that, will Johnny be called up? Now, this case is scheduled to end, not this Friday, but next Friday is going to be the closing arguments. And so the judge has already said, hey, guys, uh, next Friday is when it is. If you guys had to decide, you know, let's let's just say that today was the closing arguments. Who are y'all pulling for? Y'all pulling for Amber? Put an A for Amber in the chat and pull a B for uh pull a B, not a B, uh, what is it? A and then a J. A J for your boy uh Johnny Depp. All right, let's pull up our man Savior Black. We got Savior Black and now Savior Black, how are you doing? Uh you need to unmute yourself. Lord knows I've, I've been there before. <laughs> I saw you on another live stream, Savior Black, and you were having the same dang audio problems. Listen to you. You got, you got the whole studio set up. Well, the studio looking sweet. We can't even hear you. Let me drop you down for a second. I'm not going to kick you out the back. Let me drop you down. Let me bring up my man, James. We got James. We got a trucker in the house, it appears. James, how are you doing? What's up, Lee? Uh, yeah, I talked to you yesterday. I had the day off of work. Uh, oh, awesome. It sounds today, like I, we I, have a little I, 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 lag. So I'm just going to ask you, I'm not going to go back and forth because it seems like we got a little lag, but I'm just going to ask you, what are your thoughts on this case? How do you see it shaping up kind of the testimony that you heard today? Kind of, kind of what do you think? What a waste of $6 million. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, right. like, 
I, 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 I'm kind of reflecting what I said yesterday. I was like, what is going on? I don't get it. I, like, this lady is, like I said, 70 years old, got all this year experience. And me, I'm driving a box truck, and I can see these questions are trash. And yes. then you got Camille just constantly sniping her, just objection, 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 objection. And the lady, so she don't, she don't even know how to come back. It's like, it's like watching a, it's like watching a, a Floyd Mayweather versus a, a, a amateur. And yes. Just, so, okay, let me ask you one question, then I'll get off. Because I'm yeah. driving through these backwood Georgia towns, and, you know, I might be Shout lagging. out to Georgia. Shout out to Georgia. Um, it, if I'm Amber Heard, is it too late in the day to, like, get rid of her? You know, I made a joke about firing her because I know Amber should, I mean, I mean, at, at this point, you absolutely want to fire her when you see her getting decimated by some young attorney. So I said that many times, but honestly, it's tongue in cheek, tongue in cheek. If it's in the middle of a trial, this has been a six week trial. You, you, you just got to you got to ride with it. You know, there's no way that that Amber Heard can replace her at this junction. Now, what she can do, there are multiple people on her legal team. So she can go back and tell her legal team, hey, y'all have to switch it up. I don't know what y'all have to do, but I don't want grandma handling any more testimony. You know, maybe this, we all have to reshuffle the workload. So maybe grandma can yeah, do some of the research. Grandma can do some of the writing and then put the dudes up or put somebody else. Up. Somebody has to talk besides grandmother because Camille has grandmother's card. I mean, Camille's got her pinned down dead to right. Uh, yeah, Camille's got her to choke up. Grandma needs to take a seat. Like that's, yes. that was just embarrassing. I, there's no way else to put it. That was embarrassing. And Camille just like she just signed her ticket. She's about to be the next, you know, she's about to be the Mexican uh, Johnny Cochran in this thing. <laughs> that is exactly right. <laughs> Listen, James, thank you so much for coming up. I really appreciate it, brother. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, talk to you later, so you be safe on these Georgia roads. Let's bring up Savior Black. And I see Mr. Mustachio in the back, but I don't see your camera. It says your device is not connected. So hopefully you'll be able to connect your device, Mr. Mustachio, so you can come up. I will definitely call you up. You supported me and this stream and this channel so strongly. Thank you so much. And while I say that, let me just give a big shout out to Mr. Mustachio again, showing so much love for the stream. Says only one chorus laugh, guys. Don't know if I'll ever stream, but I'm going to snag this to toss it in my toolbox. Thank you. And it is the number one course on live streaming. You know, it's not one of these thousand dollar courses that cost two uh, that, that are two hours long or these fifteen hundred dollar courses that are four hours long. This is an 18 hour course. All right. So thank you so much, Mr. Mustachio. I really appreciate it. All right. We got my man, Savior Black in the house. Savior Black, how are you doing? Doing good. Doing good. Did I fix the audio? Can you hear me yet? Yes. It sounds a little muffled, but we can absolutely hear you. We can absolutely hear you. Uh, so, and let me give a quick shout out to everybody on Rumble, people on Rumble with congratulating AV. Uh, shout out to A Low uh, 1006 says, Congratulations, AV. Shout out to Long Meadow says, The lead attorney, love your Rumble channel. Thank you. Thank you. Shout out to uh, Evan Talk. Shout out to Finboss for Hillary, always riding with me. Shout out to Choctaw56. Shout out to everybody on Rumble. Shout out to Project. Web SEO CCJ 1990. Shout out to Cricket, uh, Cricket 7676. Shout out to everybody watching me on Rumble. So, yes, Savior Black, you know, what have you, uh, what, have, what was kind of your, been your impression of this of this case? I, I've never seen an attorney dog walk like how grandma's been dog walked on this one. I, and I guess that's the question I have for you. Have you ever seen an attorney dog walk in 20 plus years? Have you ever seen anyone dog walk like that in the courtroom? At, does um, that to that extent? Honestly, you know, you you'll see a lot of bad stuff after 20 years. But what pushed it over the edge for me was the fucking hugs. <laughs> that that to me was just like, come on, right? I mean, you you see, you you can see attorneys get slaughtered, and a lot of times an attorney will get slaughtered, and it's not their fault because right. again, it's y'all's fault. It's the client's fault. The clients can mess up an attorney's case and an attorney's work. But this client, Amber wasn't saying anything. It was really attorney to attorney. 
And uh, shout out to Camille. She just crushed it. But what was the, the kicker, man? What was the bay salt in the wounds was the <laughs> damn hugging everybody, right? So it, it was bad. That is pretty, pretty... It's pretty bad, save your butt. Yeah, I, I was gonna say that because for me it wasn't so, so much them taking a victory lap in the middle. I know that got you that everybody doing the hugs with the victory lap. It was when her attorney when when, when Camille started sitting up there pulling that Michael Jackson, you know, Michael Jackson makes up words like that. Chimo! I say she started making up objection. She's like, objection, and she was calling him out. And it was like, uh, and I'm intelligent. I'm like, wait, I started pulling out the <laughs> yeah, is that an objection? That's a I'm like, I know it's not federal, but is that a state thing? They got to be is that an unintelligible. She started like calling objections, like it was like just like pulling them out, like yeah, Michael Jackson moment. And I'm like, exactly. Yeah, that's easy. Exactly. I think yeah, that was, was a tech guy. The tech guy was leaning over and saying something when that happened. Yeah, that what it was because it's like she started when she called it out. I'm like. I, in my mind, I started going back over what's the federal rules of evidence. I'm like, because it's really it something in Virginia. I don't know. Is it like yeah, hey, hey, save your black. I'm sorry. Everybody's complaining about your audio in the chat, man. Everybody. So I got to I gotta take you off. But thank you so much. But get your audio fixed. You got a great setup. Thank you guys for letting me know his uh, audio was hot. I appreciate that. Is Mike. Shout out to uh, Mind. Black mind, money, and muscle. Thank you. Mr. Mustachio, you're in the back twice, but it says that your devices are not connected. Hopefully you can connect them up. Uh, so we're going to close the back. Uh, the back is only open for Mr. Mustachio, but we got JP here. Let's bring up my man, JP. How are you I'm doing? I'm back. I'm back. I'm doing pretty good. I was looking crazy yesterday. I seen. The, I looked back at the video. I said I had some shit on my eyebrow, man. I had some, some crumbs on my mustache. It was <laughs> Listen, it's tough, oh, man. man. Yeah, no, no problem. Thank you for coming back up. How do you feel sure. about about what's been going on here? I mean, I think so. I used to do debate. I did debate years ago when I was in a junior college, and um, mm. you know, there's really specific, you know, rules to you know objections and stuff like that. And if you have someone who is who is technically proficient at litigation in that way, you end up with a situation like what we have today. But but also, listen, uh, Elaine Bredoff or whatever her name is, the lawyer, uh, the, the grandma. Uh, yeah, she's got her work cut out for her because her her you know her her client is terrible. Her client has a bad attitude. It's just it's just not good. Um, and I, I sent a super chat earlier. Uh, there was a point that you were trying to make to people. They're like, you know, well, the jury can kind of make their own decision, but. Yeah, they can, and some of them will, but you want to be specific. You want to exactly. frame the argument because it's like if you have a, a, a score sheet, like if you have a, a table and there's all these points that you score, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You want those clearly outlined because those become points that they need to attack. And then when you come back at the end of the, the trial, and you, you're probably the expert in this, I would assume that you would go point by point through that list and say, hey, they didn't even discuss this or they didn't attack this. And we said this, you know, the point stands. It's, basically like like debate in that way mm -hmm. so um i think uh you know i mean i don't even think amber heard's attorneys are doing a bad job per se uh but yeah the the, the her grandma's getting her ass kicked though i mean that's just you know it, it is what it is uh yeah. it looks bad it's terrible so uh yeah that's my that's my point of view but i, I think this looks good for johnny after uh some uh you know some accusations of abuse but it, I don't see Amber winning at this point. She's not yeah. likable, and then her credibility is shot. So those two it's things together doesn't tough. look good. You're absolutely right. It's going to be super, super tough. And I agree with you. You make your point. You know, there's going to be closing arguments. There's going to be the summation, so you can wrap it all up then. But also during the trial, go ahead and slow it down and make your points and show these jurors that this lady is not credible. She's lying all over the place. So you are exactly right, JP. Thank you so much for coming up. Really, my man, it. my right, man. Thank you. And we got the man of the hour. We got Mr. Mustachio in the house. Mr. Mustachio, how are you doing? Doing good. How are you doing tonight, Lee? Good. And I do like the the the, the mustache, the mustache. They got the handlebar action going on. I like that. Well, that's... Listen, <laughs> go ahead. I'm sorry. I was gonna say I got the name for a reason. There you go. Oh, now listen, and let me while you're up here, just let me take the opportunity to thank you so much for always supporting me so strongly. Um, I'm super, super grateful to you. So thank you. And I'm wondering, you know, you've been watching this, 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 this proceeding, this trial. Kind of what's your take on it? Um 
if it hasn't become obvious already, I think it's going to become obvious that anytime Amber is asked a question that could incriminate her for being honest, mm -hmm. uh, those are the questions that she always answers uh, sideways. Like she doesn't give a direct answer. It's yes. Every time, you know, we're talking about how Camille needs to get her to give just a yes or no. And she refuses to give a direct answer because she knows if she gets caught lying, one, she can get in trouble. And two, if she tells the truth, uh, she can't tell the truth because it would put a lie to all of her testimony so far. Exactly. You are exactly right. Like there are some questions, just like you're saying, that she doesn't mind giving a yes or no answer to, but she'll, she'll listen to the question. If, if the answer is sketchy, that's when she'll start to get all slippery, right? So that she doesn't get pinned down. And Camille is kind of letting her slide a little bit. Camille is giving her a lot of, uh, a lot of room, you know? Well, I think uh, Camille's letting her, you know, essentially dig her own grave because Amber's setting the precedent for her patterns of behavior. And mm -hmm. anybody with half a lick of sense can see, you know, she's willing to answer directly whenever it's something that's safe. But anytime it's something direct, like, you know, did you strike Mr. Depp in the face? And then she gives a sideways answer or, Something that I'm surprised Camille didn't latch on to whenever they pulled up the recording from the the old trial where she was explaining the bathroom door incident. Mm -hmm. In that recording, she was saying that Johnny was trying to come through the door towards her and she was trying to defend herself. And then today she was saying that he wasn't trying to come through the door. Uh, she was trying to get to him to stop uh, an episode or whatever nonsense she was spelling absolutely absolutely and uh you know and but even then it's not like they really focused on it and said okay let's stop for a second let's stop now which way was the door opening who was on one side of the door who was on the other side who was pushing who was kicking like let's set the scene they never really said that you know they let you listen to it and you kind of okay i kind of see where it is but they never stopped and said okay or, or you guys um they, they didn't they didn't bring in any demonstrative. These are what uh, attorneys call demonstratives, basically just poster boards. Right. This is the diagram of the damn bathroom. This is the door. Yeah. Put where you were, Johnny. Put where you were, Amber. Like what happened? Show us kind of what happened. Draw it out. They never really did that. They just kind of all, you know, the bathroom. And there were some inconsistencies and then they moved on to something else. Right. Uh, but that's a great point that that you're making, Mr. Mustache Mustachio. I love the I love the mustache, Mr. Mustachio. That you know all of all of the uh, the inconsistencies that are coming out in uh, Amber's statements. They're they're clear, and Camille is getting them out right. So you're exactly right. Camille is giving Amber so much rope to hang herself with. You know, is there anything, you know, listening to you, it, it kind of seems like you're like everybody else. It's like Johnny's kind of winning this case. Is there anything that you could hear that might make you change your mind? Is there any evidence where you're like, oh, you know, I, I think I'm for Amber now. If there was going to be evidence, I feel like they would have brought it out so far. The only evidence, and I use that heavily sarcastically, mm -hmm. that I've seen so far against Johnny has been a lot of, he said, she said, hearsay that doesn't have any actual hard evidence. Like there's for someone who takes so many damn pictures of bottles and yes. rugs and just all this random shit, you would think that they would have some pictures somewhere of any actual physical violence. Yes. And they haven't produced anything. All they've produced is uh like setting up a, a circumstantial ground without any actual hard evidence. Whereas on the side of Johnny, they've had right. nothing but hard evidence in recordings and messaging and videos, uh, just painting the exact opposite picture that anytime something starts to go south, he tries to remove himself from the situation. And Apparently, that means that he's trying to go get high so he can come back and beat her ass. But there's no evidence of that, of course. No evidence. Exactly. Amber just making stuff up, you know, out of the ether. You know, the way that you are seeing this, Mr. Bustachio, I mean, I love it. It is exactly right. It's so perspective and extremely on point.
Like I'm, I'm in total agreement with you. So it's interesting to see what the jury's gonna, because the jury's gonna say we have the who the jury members are. It's kind of been withheld from the from the viewing audience, right? Now, if you're in the courtroom, you can see clearly who the jury who the jury members are, but we can't see it. So it's interesting to see, you know, to 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 since we can't see their faces or their expressions, their body language. It's going to be interesting to see what their what their how long their deliberation is going to be and what they're going to end up uh, awarding. You know, if you were on the jury and you decided to award uh, a verdict in Johnny's favor, how much would you give Johnny? Well, I don't know. Uh, I don't know how to quantify like a defamation settlement. Um, yeah, I think Johnny was asking for fifty million dollars. I think his accountant said that he lost at least you know forty million. So, so if we get to the point where they provide, I don't know, some kind of uh, like substantial, sub substantive, whatever, mm -hmm. some kind mm -hmm. of uh, paperwork or or explanation for how they came to that number, I think it would make it easier to, you know, pick a number for a settlement. Uh, just, I mean, as it is, I, as much as I might be comfortable, I'm not 50 mil comfortable. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes, I don't know but, what that looks like. Yeah, that's a lot of money. But to be fair to Johnny, you know, his accountant, now it's his accountant, of course, right? But his accountant said he lost 40 million. So maybe you lose 40 million and then the 10 million is kind of punitive to say, hey, don't do this anymore. You know, you can't go around ruining men's career off made up allegations. It's a and story of the American judicial system whenever it comes to men and domestic violence. That is exactly right. That is exactly right. Believe all women, right? So listen, thank you so much again for coming up, Mr. Mustachio, and for supporting me so strongly. Really cannot tell you uh, how much your support means to me and to, to other content creators like, New, like AV, for example, who's, who can see the type of people that are out there and people will, who will encourage you and, and keep you going. Hell yeah, um, so I've been around since, uh, I remember you doing your 5K push, your 10K push. Wow, you know, you've been a fucking surprise when you hit 25. It was like, I don't know how I got here, guys, but maybe we can do 50. Yeah. <laughs> and here we are, what, 170,000 somewhere around? 100 and something. Yes, wow. man. Mr. Mustache yeah. was supporting me for so long. You see me fuck up so bad. So the <laughs> fact that the fact that you support me like this, I could I honestly I could I, I just cannot tell you how much it means to be Mr. Mustachio. Hey man, so, you're a uh, you're a pillar of the male community and uh you know i'm obviously some hillbilly from out in the middle of the midwest who lives in the middle of nowhere but you've had a positive impact on my life uh even if it's just getting to see kind of a, a legal perspective because i've been through some shit in the uh, family law yeah with my kids and my ex-wife and all that and uh yeah. getting to hear the kind of legal side of it back when you were still up and coming and doing you know mostly your professional side of like it's the real like, shit yeah. not all this bullshit you can, you can say it you can say yeah, it yeah <laughs> i've been there uh, i don't know you've uh you're positive upbeat charismatic fucking good looking gentleman i always I got that tie game on point and you I don't have that mustache though i can't get that mustache <laughs> like that no, my shit would come in all gray or something it'd be fucked well, up I'd have more, but I can't grow shit on the sides, and I stopped growing shit on the top a while ago, so I got to go with what I got. I love it. I absolutely <laughs> love it. Well, Alyssa, just thank you so much for rocking with me for so long. All the support that you're showing me, even though, you know, I struggle stream and I mess up all the time, I really appreciate your, your kind words and your encouragement and just always supporting your boy, supporting me. Cannot tell you how much it means to me, Mr. Mustache. Yes. Yeah. Thank you so much. Man, let's hit it one time for Mr. Mustache. Everybody put double M, put MM in the chat for Mr. Mustache. Thank nah, you man, so there's much, already Mr. a white boy that's got M&M. &M. It ain't, ain't me. <laughs> <laughs> that is the one name that's taken, lead, and you're going to try and throw that at me. The one one. <laughs> that is exactly right. I didn't even think about that. I didn't even think sure. about that. Shout out to Mr. Mustache. Well, listen, thank you so much, man, for coming up. You are welcome to come up anytime, brother. Thank See, you. One so of these much. days, I'll make it out to one of your luncheons out there in Georgia. I'll have to survive the heat, but 
I'll, I'll make it up or listen, <laughs> your dinner is on me. I really just appreciate all of your support and rocking with me for so long through all of my fuck ups. I really appreciate it, Mr. Mr. Oh Mr. yeah, two hundred K in the next couple months. I'm calling it now. We will hope so. We'll keep our fingers crossed. Shout out to Mr. Musashio. Thank you so much, brother, for coming up. Everybody really, you. really appreciate it. Thank you. Shout out to Mr. Mustachio, man. It's it's so awesome to see, you know, such longtime supporters uh, on your channel. He's been with me from the start. So shout out to him. Shout out to Joshua. Thank you so much. Joshua said, ma'am, I'll just say it. Y'all bump don't. <laughs> Y'all to bump us. This uh, this is back. Joshua was referring to the woman with the uh, nice hair in the nice uh, office. I wish I could film a video out there. It was super nice. Shout out to uh, Joshua. Thank you so much. We got Instructor Mike. I don't know if Instructor Mike is still in the house. Thank you so much. Instructor Mike says bought it. Oh, Instructor Mike bought the course. Thank you so much, Instructor Mike, who bought the course. Says, uh, Camille, thanks, Lee. The Godfather lives forever. Absolutely. Let's hit it one time for Kevin. Hit it one time for the Godfather. Absolutely. Shout out to, uh, what does Bullish say? AV is a certified eight and a half fresh face. Great combo, TLA. Let's hit it one time for AV. Got AV in the house. Damn goddess cam. What the hell E Black was talking about? A married man, no less. Shout out to E Black. Shout out to a Silent Sniper. That's what damn Camille was doing, just sniping her up. Shout out to Wrench Turner. Says, AV, you better choose up. Tell her. Tell her, Wrench Turner. Said, a mentor and a mate all in one. Come on, say, get her lead. Shout out to Wrench Turner. Always supporting all of the, the black male content creators and female content creators in the space. Y'all know Wrench Turner. Shout out to Wrench Turner trying to trying to school the young ones, bring the young ones up in the way that they should go. Shout out to Tiffany. No comment, no question, just the pure love of the game. All right, I think we are going to wrap it up. We've been going. Oh, I got a meeting, in fact, right now uh, at 6 o'clock. Let me know, AV. Well, let everybody else know. Where can they where can they reach you if they want to contact you? Okay. So you can find me on Instagram, same handle. Tonight, you can find me on YouTube, same handle. If I finish this video editing, you'll see the first video tonight. Uh, All so that's right. going to drop this week. And when you say same handle, what, like, you've got to make it plain to some people. Yes. Where could they reach you? So they can find me at AV to the seventh power on YouTube and on Instagram. AV to the seventh power on YouTube and Instagram. Shout out to AV. Listen, AV, thank you so much for coming up and good luck tomorrow on your last final of this semester. All right. Shout out to thank AV. You. Thank you so much. All right. Shout out to Murr. Says, I love JD and I believe he is not the abuser. Absolutely. Shout out to Gabriel. Please, guys, no more super chats because I've got a meeting at six and it is six now. Uh, a little virtual meeting. Shout out to Gabriel. Thank you so much. But I do want to see if there's any more Super Chats. I apologize for missing any of the Super Chats that I've missed. It's been a crazy stream. Shout out to Quellum. Said Lee Re is ba Bajan. Is that how you say it? Bajan. She is from Barbados. Okay. Shout out to Barbados. Shout out to all of the, the, the beautiful uh, women uh, from Barbados. Shout out to Quelly. Shout out to Philip as well. Says, how long after final arguments is the verdict? That depends on the jury. The jury can, you know, deliberate for five hours or for five minutes or for 15 hours. We're going to see. It's all going to be in the hands of the jury. All right. So listen, guys, thank you so much. Want to give a big shout out to everybody who watched me on Rumble, everybody who's joined me on Locals. We are having great uh, content over there. Listen, everybody on my Instagram, we had an excellent, y'all have me posted a day of shirtless pic on Instagram. Follow me on Instagram. It is, uh, what is my Instagram? The lead attorney, of course. Uh, follow me on uh, Instagram, the lead attorney and locals and rumble as well. Let me give a huge, huge shout out to the sponsors. I will put, we'll, we'll do co-sponsors. There's certainly Copo at 89 supporting your boy. I mean, I can't even tell you. I can't even, uh, hey, Guys, the support that you guys give me, uh, and y'all see, it's hard to leave an attorney speechless. Not grandma, because grandma I don't know how to talk in court. But for me, you know, I will long stroke it. I'll put the damn forearm right there, and the, the love and support that you guys send me is amazing. 
So shout out to Copoet89. Just cannot tell you how much your support means to me. And I'll, I'll just say, you know, a co. this was also co-sponsored by Mo Mr. Mustachio. Been following me ever since I had, before I had damn 5,000 subscribers. He's seen me fuck up so bad, guys. So, so bad. And I want to give a big shout out as well to all of the moderators, everybody in the chat who was killing it, man. Y'all were all on it in the chat. And let me give a big shout out to everybody who bought the course. Shout out to Michael B. Shout out to Jamie A. Shout out to Jacqueline H. Shout out to James B. Shout out to Brandy B. Shout out to Charles W. Shout out to Dara D. And shout out to Don Coleman. Guys, if you want that course, I'll put up a few extra Q, uh, discount codes. It is uh, Camille One. Just Camille the number one. If you type in O-N-E, like the letter, no, it's not going to work. Camille won. So there's a few more left if you want to grab them up. This has been an excellent, excellent show, guys. Thank you guys so much for rocking with me. I know we talked about some uh, some legal aspects. I want to give a huge shout out to AV as well. Y'all go check her out. Thank you so much, AV, for uh, co-hosting this with me. Now, listen, even though this was legal, you know, none of this has been legal advice. I am not your attorney. I am the lead attorney. And I am here to help you lawyer up. All right, everybody have a good night.